This NFL Picks Week 15 edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast. It's brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. We're also brought to you by the SGPN app. The SGPN app is completely free to download and home to all of your favorite SGPN podcasts, contests, and picks. Just type SGPN in, in your app store today to download America's number one DGen app. Hey, everybody, Joe Thigh's been here. You're listening to SGPN. So do this, let it ride. The sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh wow! You have to go to YouTube.com/sportsgamblingpodcast to check out a true paisan himself, a made man, Capiche. Ryan, real Italian Kramer in the house, feeling in for Tommy DeVito's agent. We we did have uh, cutlets for lunch. <laughs> I did. You know what? It was hilarious because <clears throat> I well, first off, shout out to my wife for helping me uh, track down a fedora for Ryan. Oh. Uh, there was a big disagreement as to who was of us. I mean, who actually... tracked it down? I had, I ventured into the mall. <laughs> Ryan did it's have to go into season. the mall <laughs> during the uh, Christmas season to purchase a fedora. <laughs> It, Brian, it was, go solo shot again so we can just break down your amazing outfit. You got the gold chain on, the fedora. <laughs> now, wait, get on your cell phone like oh. you're uh, taking a very important call. The funniest is <laughs> I'll take the mook to Dell. It shows off your oh, pinky you, ring. <laughs> oh, oh, man, this is just uh, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, Alfredo. <laughs> Uh, uh, give, me the, we get, give me the veal palm or we walk. Tommy, Tommy, don't play for the, beta. <laughs> the disrespect. Uh, and, and then the of family's course, right. out in the parking lot. Ah, oh, you got the. You, he's like, yeah, you want a chicken cutlet sandwich? He's cutting the. the this guy's making a fucking sandwich. He's got the chicken <laughs> cutlet. He's got the gloves on. It's a well, little and over it was, the top. Uh, it, it really all this like Tommy cutlets talk, all this thought of Italian stuff. We were gonna go to uh, the healthy juice bar place that we normally go to for lunch. I pulled an audible. We went to. Uh, Mario's Deli, and I got a chicken cutlet sandwich because all the cutlet talk. I'm like, I gotta get one. It was delicious. Shout out to Mario's. Have you seen the picture of uh, Tommy DeVito's dad's plumbing business with the Mario and Luigi guy? <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> it, it's it 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 does not end. This is unlike the end of The Sopranos. Which spoiler oh. alert if you haven't seen oh, it. Right. Uh, this 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 journey has not ended yet. <laughs> this we are uh, not. And, and Brian's uh, in the YouTube chat saying need a little more Italian, less Amish. Yeah, I think there is. I don't know why. There's some Amish. I mean, you have the gold chain. It's the hat. Yeah, the hat, the fedora. I think can. Uh, <laughs> you know what it is? I need the tur. It's. I realize. It's a turtleneck. I, I, yeah, I gotta have a. Turtleneck. It's really close. Josh, can you pull up the side by side photo? Of uh, Tommy DeVito. Well, and, you know what? Actually, or sorry, Tommy DeVito. May, maybe, agent. maybe this would help make it less. Uh, I don't even know if it's better wide shot or not, but maybe this would make it less uh, less Amish. Oh, God, Kramer. Oh man, wait. Hey. You have. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, he's wearing Italian bicycle shorts with the. Uh, the David penis over where his penis would be. <laughs> oh, YouTube.com. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. Wow. We we might get uh I mean we have to talk to YouTube. We might have to blur this episode. Should I should I just <laughs> do the show standing up? Steffi Small is saying she needs a drink, Ryan. This is getting uh we thankfully this is a late night oh, show. Oh perfect. We can just screen share. I'll just there, I'll just do like the <laughs> Oh. Stugats, fugats. 
Uh, Trevor says SGP has become unhinged. Oh, it's become unhinged. Yeah, come on, we're having fun. I mean, sorry if I'm a sex celebra- symbol. <laughs> celebrating the great Tommy DeVito. I did not see Ryan's commitment to the bit. Uh, oh, you want Italian. more commitment to the bit? <laughs> Are those bike shorts or is that a bathing suit? What's oh, going okay, on? Okay, so the bit here is that um, so a colleague I think went to Italy and came back, and this was the gift oh, I got. Okay. It just somehow I didn't throw him out over the years. Mm. Probably 15 years old. In fact, well, I'm going to send a picture to the person. They're going to get a <laughs> kick out of it. Uh, here's the real commitment to the bit. You probably can't see it. I'll, I'll send a close oh, up. Thank you. Um, p- n- the pinky ring is a authentic 1998 state championship ring. Oh, wow. New Jersey, <laughs> just like Tommy DeVito, just like Tommy Cutlets. We do share that in common. We are both state champs in the in the uh, state of New Jersey. Well, congrats, Ryan. You know, I went to a public school though. Just let the record be shown. We're here to celebrate all things Italian, including Not like that Fugazi. <laughs> Including Little Caesars. Oh, give me some oh, little, Caesars. little Caesars. You want pie, some hot and ready? A paisan like uh, Ryan. Oh, you want the ISO? Let's go hot and ready. <laughs> so a paisan like Ryan's <laughs> certainly appreciates. Uh, CJ's cat figurine is getting in the way. Oh man. Uh, uh, shout out to Little Caesars. The detail. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, Little Caesars. But the detail oh, they, on the little painting Caesars. is, is qu- the the David quality on these shorts. <laughs> The official pizza sauce of the NFL. Make Little Caesars part of your game day. Shout out to all the people sending us photos of their pretzel crust. The ultimate uh, picks. I want to see some pretzel crust picks and uh, make pretzel crust and Little C's uh, part of your pregame. The pizza pizza pregame, one hour before and three hours after NFL kickoffs, all day Sunday, Saturday. Uh, bonus Saturday NFL action, which means bonus times to order little C's. Get you some of that stuffed pretzel crust with the cheese inside. And of course, the pepperoni piled high in those delicious salty sprinkles on the pepperoni and the pretzel crust. Uh, cookie dough brownie bites, little C's wings, little Caesars has you covered. You can get delivery or our in store pizza portal pickup. Grab some friends and enjoy a few slices during the game. Little Caesars, pizza, pizza. Might need to update my profile picture. <laughs> I don't know, Ryan. Your profile picture is pretty good. I I don't. I, I think a, a lot of it stays the same, but maybe <laughs> we just do full body of me. No more little Caesar's body. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chad is going off. Appreciate you, Chad. The oh. real MVPs. You have to go to youtubecom slash sports gaming podcast Smash! Uh, just to see all the insanity that's going on. You, you noticed he he must re- have realized my level of fitness that he calls these UFC shorts. Oh, were those supposed to be? Uh, oh, I I have not. <laughs> I mean that that assumes I'm doing some <laughs> level of fighting, organized fighting, working out, maybe some jujitsu in there. Don't have a strong core right now. Mm. Bit of a problem. Well, no, you know. Ryan, uh, we got some NFL picks. Before we do that, we uh, a lot of contests uh, in uh, stuff to get to. First off, shout out to the uh, eleven entries remaining in the Second Chance Survivor. Of course, three thousand dollars up for grabs. Presented by Barking Dog Properties, Corey Pinkston. Uh, our survive, our Second Chance Survivor is coming down to the wire. The Circa Millions Survivor. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Circa Survivor is coming down. Did you not? Uh, did you not examine the list of people who are in the some some regulars? I saw Nagel's Bagels uh, was in there. I know you guys like to go back and forth chirping at oh, each other. Well, N- Nagel's is the like uh, you have the good, uh, the angel, and the devil. <laughs> Nagel's is like the turd behind. We, yeah, we have we have not heard of Nagel's and his take on Tommy DeVito. I assume he's upset. He he strikes me as a Giants fan. I, who would I did like them to lose no, out I, so they could get a better draft pick. That I, that would be my guess for Nagels, but I, I don't Nagels know. Nagels wants to scrub the Gettleman experience, aka Cleaner, get Barkley sorry. and Dan Jones out, and yeah. probably Sterling Shepard as well. I will say he sent me um, a DM. He sent me a couple DMs over the the last couple months. Uh, pretty hilarious. Uh, November sixth, he sent me one where it's a space that he was hosting titled "Yelling and Cursing at New York Giants Fans <laughs> Media and Ownership." Hey, just started my space. Want to join? Followed up with a picture uh, of some Tommy DeVito mail saying he's getting some mail. The legend is growing. <laughs> and then the the final shot is yeah. a picture of him still alive and the second <laughs> chance survivor. <laughs> So yeah. So what would you what would you do, Ryan, if you were in the second chance survivor? I think 
Uh, I, I mean, we Do don't have the know? availability matrix in, in no, front of us, don't. but the the 49ers, uh, I, I'm sure, would be popular if we have them. I think the I think a lot of people in our second chance survivor, if I'm guessing, the Rams. So Sean, yes, had we made it this far, our onions play of Jets over Texans would have just been all oh, fucking damn time. It. <laughs> damn it! But we've already lost twice uh, on our. We original. have already lost twice. Okay, so that, I, I'm I'm able to sleep at did night. You, did you see? Uh, I saw with the circa um, survivor, uh, twelve of the thirteen people remaining agreed to chop up the pot. They would each get four hundred thousand dollars and then play for the remaining four million. And one team said, "No, fuck it, let it ride." And guess what? You gotta love that team. Just found out there's twelve pussies still left <laughs> in the contest. So you got the upper hand. Whoever said no. Oh man. Would you, what would the you head have said? games? And and I don't know. I wonder if anyone on our because. You know uh, the second chance survivor. What three thousand divided by eleven? Eh, you're talking about you know almost three hundred dollars. I wonder if there's going to be any chopping discussion. I'm not going to facilitate it if would, someone else did. Would so you chop? Would you have taken the offer four hundred k and then you play for the last four million? Yeah, I mean four hundred k would be tough to turn down, and you still get that rush of playing for the remaining four million. So I would say you're man, also giving away tough. a lot. And I'm guessing that some of these guys like the teams they have left. Like that's a lot to do. That's with the it, other right? thing like, too. Yeah, like I. So think you of really it as like a can't money think line. of the. I honestly it would have to come down to who you have left. Now this the guy that said no, I would assume he's got some big dogs left, or at least some good spots. Like he's well, got his path figured out. Well, no, you fuck your path. It's one two, one week at a time because there's a new negotiation after this weekend, depending on how many people make it through. So. I I don't think you're looking at your entire path. I think you think, okay, which which one of these teams do I have that I feel good about? Is it Miami, Kansas City, San Francisco? Is it the Rams? Sean, yeah. we, we would have been on the Rams this week had had we still be alive. Uh I, it has to be one of those for you to to say no to the hedge, right? Yeah, I think you have to you obviously have to like uh, who well, you Well, do the math. So basically you have to feel you, you probably have to have a th minus 300 money line in your pocket to yeah. feel confident to say like I'm I'm actually losing money this weekend. Well, and then and then not Circa every, and not everyone will have them. And Circa being the generous folks that they are are extending lines of credit. So you could theoretically like let's say you had a minus 300 uh, l let's say just hypothetically you had. Uh, I'm gonna look at it. Let's say you did have the Rams. Yeah, minus 300. Perfect. You could say to Circa, and I don't know what their credit. Yeah, you know, I'll talk to Derek on Friday night. But let's say you go to Circa and go, Hey, can I borrow 150 thousand dollars? Put it on the Commanders money. Forget line. about. It. <laughs> Put it on the Commanders money line. First off, that gets you a lot of spins at the slot machine. I'll oh, say that. Forget about <laughs> it. I do have. A, we, you know, maybe I'll see. Um, you know, get a little credit line for the. Uh, Old slot machine. So I, I think I think Rams, if I had to guess, is going to be the most popular. Certainly the Dolphins, if they haven't played it, but I I don't know if uh, people have played it. Uh, and more contest news. We got a couple of what? winners to announce. More contest? Yes. Congrats to Steve uh, Accione. Nice. Maybe mispronounced that. Sorry, Steve. Steve is the winner of the college football bankroll challenge. Whoa. Just won a thousand dollars cash, two thousand dollars if he's a Patreon member, Brian. We'll have to double check Whoa. that. And then uh still waiting on the actual name, but the username wanna win one uh came in second place, five hundred dollars, and of course that would have been doubled if uh they were a Patreon. So shout out to them on the CFB. Bankroll challenge. I know Andy Bice was leading for a long way. I was gonna say he had some onion plays late that have unfortunately uh, kicked back on him. But congrats to oh. both those gentlemen. I'm assuming uh, the other the second place is salute. Gentleman. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the odds there. And uh, last week's uh, Patreon pick'em winner, Mark Garcia, who unfortunate as it is, is a Cowboys oh fan. But he just Where are <laughs> these guys, these savages, these gluttons for punishment that listen to the show. He's they one of the good ones. Nice. Uh, Ryan, they're all good ones. They all listen to our show, but we don't say anything nice about the team yeah. ever. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, and then it's like get uh, you know, like like getting your balls stomped on or something. <laughs> I, I don't get that. That's a weird freak. What uh, what are we giving away uh for this week, Ryan? Maybe even uh, autograph fedora or uh, oh, what do you what shit. do you like? I mean, 
I, I always like giving out the fun wacky prizes. People also like the circuit paper tickets. Well, I I, it, I did enjoy w walking to the window with the without the stress of buying a ticket for myself. Mm. That was the, that was a unique experience. Uh, I, I think we should do something in the holiday spirit, Sean. Okay, what's that, Ryan? I think we should uh, get someone liquored up. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. B Let's bottle do, uh, of holiday booze. Yeah, no we'll we'll call it some holiday cheer coming your way. Nice big handle. Maybe we'll get uh, get J some Mark's keepers recommendation. Hearts. Yeah, whatever the old fashioned. Uh, and if you're He's not our a, barkeep, by the way, we got to start yeah. calling J Mark and, official, and Miranda the barkeeps. Official barkeeps. And if you're not a drinker, we'll figure out a uh, substitute prize. So that is sportsgamblingpodcast.com Patreon. That is the pick'em prize for this week. Yeah, I mean, hell, if you want to meet in Vegas, we could do some of those medicinal mushrooms. <laughs> ha have one hell of a show. Woo! It's smoking my weed. <laughs> That's uh, it's it's so awesome that we've come to a 2023 full circle. Yeah, medicine in the mushrooms. <laughs> All right, I love that. I mean, I'm just thinking back to like high school aged ourselves when you're jamming those disgusting tasting things in cereal. Oh yeah, and you're like, oh, peanut now, butter sandwich. Now, now they, and you imagine explaining in the future they'll sell them in a store and say they're medicine. Okay. Uh, anything else, Sean, for the people? No, that's uh, did you want the business? Congrats wanna, on the you winners. Didn't, you didn't even want to make fun of the players of the week. Zach Wilson. Oh, those were, uh, Zach Wilson. That those were my show notes, Ryan. But yes. Tommy DeVito and Zach like Wilson. Feels like something we start the show with. Being named <laughs> AFC and NFC Players of the Week. I mean, I could see giving it to one of them, but both of them, the the voters had some sense of humor. Do you want? Do you want to have a, hear a fun nugget? Uh, the Giants, if you include Dan Jones, the three quarterbacks on the Giants roster, two of them were uh, Elite Eleven quarterbacks. Elite Eleven, of course, the high school camp before you get to college. Uh, Dan Jones was not an elite 11 quarterback. Tommy mm. DeVito and Tyrod Taylor were. So <laughs> uh, may, maybe we don't, maybe we stop being so uh, racist and disrespectful just because he's an Italian gentleman. I mean, uh, let, let's go, Sean. Uh, but Zach Wilson winning the award, un, that's unfathomable. Yeah, I I mean, the Jets <laughs> scoring 30 points. <laughs> well, and you know, Brock Purdy had a really good game. As gross as it is to say, Dak had a very good oh, game. Man. I mean, Josh Allen going in and winning in Kansas City. Uh, I mean, but whatever, I, I get it. I think they were grading on a curve when they gave it to uh, Devito listen, and Zach Wilson. The, the but I appreciate the comment. The list of quarterbacks with three game win streaks this year is not ex exactly super long. And Tommy no. Devito is on that list. So, all right, you want to pick some games? Yeah, Com let's go. Common theme for this week that I've. Uh, that I I feel like I I kind of agree with the narrative. Mm. It's a gross week, Sean. We're at week fifteen. I can't. We're near the end. We're at that point of the the year where uh, injury reports are almost impossible to dissect. And by the way, we should let the people know the concussion protocol has been removed yeah. from the NFL. The uh, the <laughs> answers know. to the tests have been leaked. Because What's happening here? Is there like cliff notes? They figured uh, yeah, it out. CTE yeah. notes. Uh, it's like oh, back that's in, a good photo uh, Back in the day, where uh, you you could load up uh, all the tests, <laughs> you know, answers on your TI eighty three oh. graphing calculator. Dude, we had a database. Scantron copies. Uh, so uh, off the record, we had um, there there may have been like a repository that some of the club sports and fraternities managed of just like <laughs> all a record of all known tests given. And oh was, wow. This stuff was available, you know, like this, you know, like a football team. You, you, you think you think Michael Vick was going to class? I mean, come on. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. How else did he anyway, pass? Anyway, it's a it's it's a gross week, Sean. Hmm. It's a gross week, and it starts with a gross game that seems to be getting grosser by the by the minute. Last we spoke to our good friend Justin Decker, the Chargers and the Raiders. We we didn't think Keenan Allen was going to be out. Uh, we thought that uh, Josh Jacobs had a chance of maybe not going. It now seems like he's almost certainly not going to go. Chargers look ahead minus three and a half. The move off of Justin Herbert sees the line flip to three plus one thirty five on the money line. Raiders minus one sixty. Thirty four and a half is the total. We did we we discussed the Easton stick angle uh, pretty in a, in depth on the Thursday night props episode, but essentially you're getting a guy that had 41 rushing touchdowns in college. Yeah. His legs are part of his game. Smash. He's been on the team since 2019. He's not going to come in and look like a deer in the headlights. We don't think he's had some preseason exposure. And on the other side, they're putting fucking 
Uh, what, what are these reports? Brian Hoyer, Jimmy G receiving first team. <laughs> well, now, 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 um, now it's back to Aiden O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell well, is starting now. No, I know that they, they had to respond to these reports by saying no, 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 Aiden O'Connell starting. But did I, he get the first team reps? Because you no, told me that they were like getting other guys first well, team reps. I think the report. I think the the more damning report is that the the initial reports that I think stemmed into the the practice reports was that this could be his last week starting. Okay. Um, which uh, unclear what you're trying to do with, if you're the Raiders uh, at this point with, with that, I mean, good time to remind the people, uh, Sean, you, cause you may forget this. You may have forgotten this, but Brian Hoyer's actual name, Axel Edward, Brian Hoyer. <laughs> I uh, did forget that. So hopefully we can get one more uh, chance to see a uh, young Axel play. So we don't think Josh Jacobs is going to play, right? We don't think Josh Jacobs is going to play. We we know now, uh, as of this afternoon, that Keenan Allen's like, all right, well, there's no point. Yeah, in me I'm playing opting out anymore. Well, this is this it is. It sounds like Devonte Adams uh, may not play. Really, and Max Crosby is dealing with a knee injury, but he actually seems like he's going to play. I mean, both sides of this are pretty ugly because either you're taking Easton Stick and the Chargers without Keenan Allen. Uh, at least they're getting points, or you're taking Aiden O'Connell yeah, as a favor. This is very difficult, and I, so here's what I would say about Devonte Adams: did uh, did not get listed on Monday, did not get listed on Tuesday. They they were just walkthroughs. But then on on Wednesday, illness mm. did did not participate. Could he also be maybe having a vet game off? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know what to make of this game. I mean, this is. Really a tough one. Teams coming off a shutout like the Raiders are 29, 19 and or 29, 13 and three ATS, 69% in their next game since 2015. Now that's kind of probably in a similar vein of the close your eyes special. They they yeah. got shut out at home yeah. against this Vikings defense. I do think the Raiders are gonna be able to move the ball against this Chargers defense. I think Michael Mayer, you listen to the prop show, I like his matchup. I do think Aiden O'Connell is going to be able to throw on this Chargers defense, but not having Devontae Adams could be huge. Um, this is just this is uh, the well, only I, thing I'm sure of is that Easton Stick is going to run the ball. Easton Stick rushing touchdowns. Easton Stick get the ladder, get the stick, as they say. For Easton it's Stick, it's going to be a stick, stick, stick squared. I I do think the return of Josh Palmer makes okay. it. Uh, I'm not. I'm kind of. I'm still kind of in on the idea that the Chargers' offense will will do some damage this week. I I I think this is also just a gross Thursday night game. And in also a, keep a, an eye out. Um, real quick, we didn't talk about it with Decker again. It was like late injury news. Uh, Donald Parham, uh, questionable. So Stone Smart, if you remember oh from no. the uh, that massive anytime touchdown that I cancel or cashed against the Packers. Stone Smart uh, touchdown bets could be in play as well, and Stone Smart is probably a guy that had some good preseason work with one Easton <laughs> Stick. Do we, do we at all Stone. want to address the idea that I mean we've kind of you've been alluding to it all season, Herbert? Maybe a little Herbie bit of the fully problem. loaded. Well, you're moving you're moving six and a half points off a guy that might have been part of the problem. Coming off a zero touchdown game. Against the Patriots. Seems like an obvious spot to just say, hey, it's it's Chargers on the road. Although this could be a rare game where the <laughs> Raiders have. I, I'm actually going to make a shocking. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of Chargers fans. No. I, Brian, I think, no I they think, will pan the crowd. I think There'll we're no going to see more Chargers fans at this game no. than we see in SoFi. Uh, I, I think no, if we. No. Side by side, Raiders, Chargers, and SoFi. Raiders Chargers in Las Vegas. Remember when the uh, NFL planted that uh, that Asian Chargers fan? Oh, she's a then real they, Chargers. They, fan. they had her eliminated. They wrote her off. She uh, also had footage being a Vikings fan, but that was you know <laughs> she had two teams. Even the, even the viral Chargers fan is a phony Chargers fan. I I think there will be Chargers fans <sighs> in this building. I don't know, man. I can't. But, what are you doing, Ryan? Oh, I. We've always had a simple handicap with this. Chargers thing. on the road. Yeah. All right, I'll take the Chargers plus three. This is gross though. Uh, I'm just going to be betting the Easton stick props because taking, <laughs> taking the chargers without Keenan Allen feels stupid, but so does uh, laying points with Aiden O'Connell. I did debut the uh, first, last, any, many, both mm. Mm. 
Easton Stick. If Easton Stick scores two touchdowns, I'll have retired. It's better than be, be winning Best Ball Mania four. All right, we got uh, just a quick alert. In case you're a little behind this year, uh, holiday shopping season oh, no. snuck up on you. We got it really snuck up on me. We got Saturday football. Uh oh. And, and they didn't just say give you that a little nighttime dabble or maybe mid all day long. All day long. It's beautiful, but you're not going to have any time to go shopping. So just heads up. 10 a.m. <laughs> on the West Coast. Vikings, a little back to back a road situation here. They're heading to Cincinnati, where the Bengals. First public side we're going to talk about here. Seventy-seven percent of the bets laying three minus one sixty-five. Vikings plus one forty. Forty and a half is the total. Browning uh, looked good. He he had to come out of the game for a second. Uh, yeah, it was like a hand spasm. <laughs> what? Which? What do you think that? What's a? <laughs> what to know when to uh, I had some I had some hand spasms uh, back in the day in middle school, <laughs> right? Oh uh, yeah, you know. Sorry, what? mom. I'm gonna stay uh, a I'm little sick. sick a little under uh, under the weather. <laughs> All of a sudden, a hand spasm. You know, it pairs well with uh, this scrambled uh, Playboy channel. <laughs> <laughs> nice hand spasm. People, I, I don't, I, I wonder if younger kids realize that we're not joking as far as like just praying to see a, a boob through like scramble. Oh. They probably think you're kidding. Photocopied like Playboy magazine. Weird mystery pornography you'd find in the woods. It was dark times. <laughs> you would buy there. There would be. I mean, Colby's the king of having dealers or, or uh, for everything. <laughs> but they, like, you would, you would find. So basically the way that the, the the easiest way to get anything was you go to the computer shows. Yeah. Cuz at the computer shows there'd always be that section in the back with dudes just selling porn. Mm. Yeah. So that I, was that. <laughs> like bang. Bing, and then bang, you boom. then you'd get you'd get some uh, you get some good merch and then you'd sell it Kids off. Kids don't realize how easy they have it these days. We we had to buy porn. I'll or sell find you it this, in the woods. I'll sell you this 2-year-old <laughs> magazine for $40. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that's a great deal. <laughs> Uh, I'll trade it to you. I trade it for a six pack of beer. I mean, I, I think Jake Browning, uh, he looked very good. I mean, uh, the the most impressive thing to me was he had a short week after a huge Monday night win in overtime against the Jags, and he still looked pretty good. Now, I, I don't think he's better than Joe Burrow. I don't mm -hmm. think Joe Burrow's a system quarterback. I do. I well, don't. I, I don't. But I'm I'm wondering. I like the conspiracy theory, but I would say this. I and I do think on backup quarterbacks, there's a short shelf life, right? Like a lot of times they come in, they have some plays that really work for them. Bing. Simple reads. There's not a there's not a playbook yet on how to beat these guys. This is an interesting spot because I do think you know Flores um, is going to bring a ton of blitzes, and you know we'll see if this Bengals team can can pick them up. But I'm not taking Nick Mullins on the road, and you got a Vikings dome team. Uh, coming off a very ugly game, I get it. Nick Mullins is better than um, Josh Dobbs. Wait, pa and pause. Why? Why are we so like? What are we basing this on? Okay, I, I guess Nick Mullins came into that game and looked slightly better than Josh Dobbs. I don't know if he's going to look better than Josh Dobbs would in this game. So you're right; they both could suck. I do feel like that is a blanket assumption we are making based on well, not and, a lot. And Nick Mullins, you could you could argue, has a longer uh, sample size of sucking five and twelve straight up as a starter. Uh, he last started in twenty twenty, so not very good. And you know he somehow you, hurt his back at, in practice during the season, <laughs> being the backup, not even the third. Uh, honestly, I would say. If I was the Vikings, I would work on some design run stuff with Jaron Hall and come out with like a weird read option, wildcat style uh, package to keep the to, that would uh, kind of shock the Vikings. Now, some matchups that I do think favor the Vikings, and shout to Steffi Small, she tweeted this out as well. I was on similar thinking. Uh, big TJ Hawkinson game. Uh, Nick Mullins loves throwing to the tight end. Some of Kittle's best games. Came courtesy of Mullins, and the Bengals are bad against the tight end, so it's really a, a smash spot. But I would st I would counter though by saying the Bengals defense, uh, like just overall for the game itself, I do I like, like that matchup for the Vikings. Yourself. No, I I like that matchup for the Vikings. I don't think it's going to be enough for them to win the game because the Bengals defense has played well at home, and I'm not going to take a non-conference team like the uh, Vikings in this spot. Now, granted, they won that game, but they can't be feeling great about their uh, offense. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, and I, I think that I think the Bengals pass rush can get the Mullins. Bengals thirty first DVOA against the the tight end, only better than your Philadelphia Eagles, Sean. Uh, I a lot of lot of reasons for me to be curious here. I know Jefferson says he's in. Um, hopefully he doesn't see Keenan and Devontae and be like, oh, wait, wait a second. It's late in the season and my team's not doing that good. I can I can sit out. Though they're they're kind of in the playoffs. I they have offensive line situations. They have I, I, I don't know how you can take the Vikings. I thought they were overvalued last week. They kind of snuck away with a push. Yeah, I mean that game. I don't know. My maybe you covered if you. I, I don't late. know what the big takeaways from that game is. I would just say both teams suck. And then Justin Jefferson. I mean, he got taken to a hospital. He is. It does sound like he's playing, but I can't imagine he's going to be that excited to get whacked uh, outside uh, in cold weather in Cincinnati. Like that's got to be a tough spot for him. I mean, this feels like it's got to be. If I'm interested in the Vikings, it's got to be like four and a half for the Vikings. Like Nick Mullins on the road. What are we talking about? I, I don't see it. And it'd be one thing if the Vikings had a good rushing game to help like carry their offense, but they don't. And and we saw how bad it looked against the Raiders in a dome environment. Now you're going outside against the Cincinnati team that is a shit ton of confidence. I so love Cincinnati. We're gonna here. be donkeys. What? Let me guess. Some market dynamics are seventy eight percent on the Give me the Bengals. Uh, I'm fine being a donkey here. It's also like a sleepy spot. Don't it's an early kick on Saturday. Uh, everything you said is correct. Also, I mean, I, I did we mention the weather? Um, do we care about the weather? No, not really. I assume it's not going to be particularly great. Uh, it's Cincinnati in December. It could be nice. It, it could it could be in the 50s. Uh, there's a chance of rain, not very high. Chance of wind, not very high. So it could be a nice day, but. I just am blown away that people can't ran to the window to bet the Vikings because Nick Mullins was playing. I mean, I, I think when you're a bad team, it's kind of all right to have someone like Josh Dobbs. And I don't so know. So I was the look ahead line minus one for Minnesota. I mean, I get your like that's crazy to me because they just didn't believe in Jake Browning at all. Uh that's a good question. Yeah, but if there, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Cause there's no maybe, crazy maybe injuries. I ty- maybe I typoed that one, but yeah, I think maybe even when I mentioned again, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand this one. Th- th- this, I would, I would say there are a handful of games this weekend where it's just like, all right. But to me, Minnesota just continues to be overvalued. All right. One thirty on the West coast Steelers coming off Thursday night, Mitch Trubisky in the oh. house. Although <laughs> we're also getting reports that Mason Rudolph could get some reps. Tomlin, maybe on the hot seat. Oh, come on Steelers. Uh, th- that was being reported out of Pittsburgh. I'm not making that up. P- uh, Pittsburgh heads to Indy where the Colts are catching 74% of the action. Again, you know, maybe you pick one of the games on Saturday to get all the, uh, the random errands uh, done for the wife. So you can catch the other two. The Colts minus one and a half, minus one thirty on the money line. Pittsburgh plus one ten. Forty two and a half is the total. Ah oh, man, I mean, probably if we if we were to sit down and look at the situation before the year and say, hey, uh, Anthony Richardson gets hurt week uh, in three out of the five games he plays, and Gardner Minshew is leading this team into the playoffs. Um, almost almost unbelievable, and yet in this spot, Sean. Zero uh, percent chance of me getting anywhere near the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know Tomlin has a dog. I mm. I watched Mitch Trubisky play play. He's I, pretty bad. I don't care what happened to the Colts last week on the road in Cincy. I was wrong there, but I'm gonna drag my ass right back to the window. If this was in Pittsburgh, it'd be a completely different handicap for me. But I I don't I don't know where the respect for Pittsburgh is coming from. Trubisky looked fucking horrible. Well, so does the so does the Colts secondary. Like the Colts secondary is banged up. Uh, they're pretty bad now. Alex Highsmith and T.J. Watt were in the concussion protocol, but it both seems yeah. it seems like they're both going to play. Uh, concussions aren't real in this. Well, the they've got rid of concussions, of which I'm I'm all for. It makes it easier to handicap if we know concussions don't exist. There's a ton of drama from the Steelers team, but man, they are the Steelers, uh, and. 
And I do think we're going to get the best effort from this Steelers team. I, it, it really is like Minshew as a favorite or Mitch Trubisky on the road. Um, neither are super exciting, but I do think I'll look out for Jalen Warren uh, receiving yards, possibly a ladder situation there. I, I think this is a good spot for the Steelers. Oh, I th- I kind of disagree with you. Cause I think the, I, I think Pittsburgh has continued like can through all the data now with mostly healthy, re- he- healthy combinations of players up front that Pittsburgh's still a bad team against the run. And this Colts team generally has been able to run against most teams. And so I do, I, I think Gardner Minshew, this is a great spot to pick up Gardner Minshew. I think if th- this was not the Steelers and there was a different team wrapped around Mitch, Tr- Mitch Trubisky in, in this situation, I mean, Deontay Johnson, is he gonna, he popped up on the injury report. Um, I, I, I love, I love, I love Tomlin as a dog. I understand that angle. I just, th- this is a very, very, I, he, he can't fix the offense. He cannot fix this offense with these quarterbacks and that's the problem. Yeah. I, I think, I think uh, so. Yeah. Good luck. I understand I'm going to take TJ doing. Watt. I think he's going to create enough turnovers to uh, spin this game, I but just, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't love it, but I, I have picked the Steelers every single week. In right, well, I, it's, I think I've picked them every single week. Yeah, yeah you are. A and they are. What? What's their? They're against the spread records. Like what? Seven and. You're five? having a great year. It's just like when the, <laughs> that year the Cowboys went like five and twelve against the spread. It was fabulous. I think they. I think they are like eight and five against the spread. So I'll take it. I'm giving the Steelers one more time as a dog. It's Tommy. weird. I've become backs a, against the wall. Extra rest. I've become a Colts fan. It's weird. Uh. No, I I like this Colts team. I just haven't found good spots to take them and. I don't know. Minshew, I think the playbook kind of got out on him last week. Need at least three points with uh, Trubisky. Denver, the Broncos, um, another, uh, I think this is the third straight road game for the Broncos. They're heading to Detroit to take on the Lions. Lions minus four, minus 220 on the money line, plus 180 for the Broncos. 47 and a half is the total. Uh, yeah, Goff, I mean, we mentioned it last week, but lions don't have to go back outside rest of the season. It sounds like they're, uh, I mean, based on the injury report, they're basically all healthy, which feels good to be that at this point in the season. Uh, not that the Broncos are that banged up. Yeah. I I don't think they're, I think they're fairly healthy as well. Uh, it kind of strike this, this kind of strikes me as one of these handicaps where you know, is Detroit the team we've seen lately, or are they were they are they the team that we saw in the start of the year? Because the team that we've seen lately has it's kind bad. of an ass. Yeah, Jared Goff kind of in a tailspin, eight turnovers in his last four games, and some of those games have been at home indoors, where he's usually pretty reliable. To me, it's more just the defense went back to being what the defense maybe always was going to yeah. be, and we just saw a spike early in the year. We got excited because we wanted them to take that step forward, but at the end of the day. Just because you have a couple guys with blonde locks flowing out of their helmet, <laughs> Anzalone, who I swore was going to be out in that Bears game, and then he shows up. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I again, injury is injuries are complete bullshit. Guys just play all the time. Yeah. Now we got to we got to remember that, right? <laughs> uh, this is a good stat from Connor Allen breaking down the Lions' defense since their Week Nine bye. Lions' defense ranks 29th in points per game. 32nd in points per red zone drive, 29th in pressure rate, 29th in EPA per play allowed, 27th in explosive pass rate. And the I teams was, they've played, Bears twice, Chargers, who suck, sorry Decker, Packers and Saints. Like they're not playing, you know, the Miami Dolphins or or the 49ers or some of these electric offenses, Ryan. Uh they've really looked bad and this Broncos team has confidence. They've come to life. Couple, there are a couple matchups that favor Detroit for sure. Like I, I think Detroit's key to success here is getting David Montgomery going in the run game. Uh, Sam Laporta, good matchup for them. Denver's not amazing against the tight end, uh, but the Lions struggle against rushing quarterbacks. Um, now they lead the league in rush yards allowed to the quarterback. Now two of that games were Justin Fields just dominating them, but uh, Russell Wilson uh, likes to run. I think he might have some decent plays here. Uh, rag now being out for the lines is big. And then their tackle uh, Decker. Uh, I, is... don't, I don't think he's out. Okay. I think, I think Ragnow. I mean, they were all limited today. 
and it sounds like the like the, there's optimism. Okay, so Frank Rag now is gonna play. Ryan's reporting. I'm not. I'm. I'm just saying. I wouldn't say he's out. Uh, he went from not practicing uh, to to practicing knee, back, and toe though. Not, not that's a number of injuries there. Okay, so yeah, they are practicing. They're limited. Um, what does that mean for them? This is tough because I think if it wasn't for that third road game for the Broncos, I would probably be all over the Broncos here catching the points. That's kind of what has me going on the Lions and then the Lions getting back. But I, the more I think about it, like who, how can this Lions defense lay four points? Yeah, that that's the I I think that's where I was going at the very beginning. It does seem like if this is the bad team we've been watching that can't play defense, how can you possibly lay four points? Especially against a Denver team that I mean, look at their numbers, Sean. I mean, if, if you're if you're a Patreon, you you can you have access to the sheet. Their yeah. numbers were bright red earlier in the year, mo for most of the year, and they have plummeted, which tells you how good they're playing lately. And I think that the the last thing I'll say is. Th- they stopped they they stopped the run really well on defense and that's like again we're pushing Jared Goff into that moment where he has to do something and lately he's been fucking it up so yeah i'm going to go denver here i i think this game ultimately this feels right like point. a field goal game ba- uh, we'll have to check in if this ever ha- ever happened but three straight road games all played inside okay yeah and i i do uh, think that makes a little bit of a difference cuz you're talking about playing out in the elements one last nugget. This is a big nugget for me. This is a master versus student Dog. situation. Mm. Where did Dan Campbell learn how to be a coach? That's under, the other thing. Under Sean Payton. Dan Campbell, kind of shitty coach, right? Are we are we are we well, not a little worried about Dan Campbell? I think Sean Payton was the brains of the operation and Dan Campbell was just a try hard <laughs> tight end coach. And right. it worked out for him because that one time a coach in Miami got fired and he ran some Oklahoma <laughs> drills. Sounds like he's going to uh, this week. He's pretty pissed off. They Ryan. need to drag him into the deep water. <laughs> Ryan, time for our prize picks segment Ooh. of the week. Prizepicks.com slash SGPN. Use that promo code SGPN. Get yourself a hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. All right, Kramer, what do we like this week on the old prize picks? Just talked about our boy Russell Wilson. Um He's kind of interesting, at least with uh, his rushing yards, 26 and a half. I'm going to start there for my play. I'm going to go more Russell Wilson rushing yards at 26 and a half. How say you, Ryan? What's uh, something uh, you like? Well, what's this? Uh, no, no Tommy Cutlets in here. Looking Do for they the, not have DeVito's for number? The Tommy Cutlets stuff. <laughs> well, because the Saints aren't great against uh, rushing quarterbacks as well. Uh, all right. W- what can we. Um, what can we play around with here? All right, all right. What I here's what I would do. I would jump over uh, to the Colts game. Like I said, no Jonathan Taylor. Give me the Moss oh, combo okay. yards. Wait, Ru- Jonathan Taylor isn't playing? I thought he was coming back. I think he's coming back next week. Do we need to do? I double need- check that. Okay. Hold I on. thought he was playing. Chat, feel free to chime in. Is Jonathan Taylor right, playing? This, uh, I I wish I had the confidence just to snap. Snap respond to you. But I'm pretty sure he's not playing until next week. He missed practice, but he still might play. Okay. Then we won't play that one. Okay. I really wanted to just just slam the uh the Tommy Cutlets. All right. Uh let's let's play this uh, second angle. Uh we think there's a chance. Have they, they yes, they have. All right. We think there's a chance that Mason Rudolph could play. Yeah. Give me the pass yard. Less for Mitchell Trubisky. Wow, they're they're, they're offering Mitch Trubisky two hundred and a half passing yards. All right, because even as a guy who likes uh, the Steelers, best? I I <laughs> I could not play the more on Mitch Trubisky passing yards. All right, so uh, yeah, nice little uh, plus three hundred play here over on PrizeFix.com promo code SGPN, and of course a uh, hundred dollar wager would win you three hundred dollars. And of course, 100% deposit match up to $100. So deposit 100, get a free 100 to play with. Prizepicks.com slash SGPN promo code SGPN. Daily fantasy made simple. I uh, just I grabbed a little piece of that too, Sean. Oh yeah. And the chat is overwhelmingly responding now that uh, Jonathan Taylor won't be playing. Okay. I thought I thought there was some stuff you might feeling confident. All right. 
Yeah, I, I uh, the the Denver- Terrell Furman pointing out it's Zach Moss's birthday weekend. Shout out to Terrell. He is the uh, SGPN in-house horoscope guy. Yeah. Always knows when it's uh, a guy's birthdays. Let's remember. Uh, all right, so no, note that for the prop show. Uh, per- <laughs> Gardner Minshew is definitely a narratives guy. Yeah. He'll definitely want to make sure he has a great birthday. All right. Let's hop over to Sunday. Celebrate, my man. Where we have Sean, even though we had the three Saturday games, they've still found a way to get us seven games in the early window. Oh, let's go. God's eye will be rocking. The Atlanta Falcons are heading to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Panthers laying three mine or uh, wow. Panthers catching three plus one thirty five on the money line. And Falcons minus 165 35 is the total uh, just the the time we live in with all these just hearing Colby bitch about all the offense and just seeing totals in the NFL plummeting to an all time yeah if Colby low. actually followed the NFL he would be uh, <laughs> he would love it right now he would now. love how ugly these games are Foul, we got FCS there's a 3 nothing game granted it was in yeah. a dome but uh, 85% of the bets on the Falcons here should be 100 should be a hundred. Yeah. I uh, think there's going to be potentially a little bit of rain here. Sean uh, bringing some serious hot fire to Ritter and he, he went off last week, Sean, he, he put up uh, his uh, season high and career high. Uh, Drake London did the same. Uh, Arthur yeah, Smith Drake has London, the offense 10 crack. for 172. Uh, Arthur Smith, don't worry, found a way to fuck up the game and lose. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> We're celebrating these stats though. This is a great stat. Uh Falcons tight end Kyle Pitts has played 37 career games in the NFL oh, after being drafted 4th overall in 2021. He has 4 career touchdowns. Uh Lions mm. rookie tight end Sam LaPorta, second round pick, playing in his 11th game has 5 career touchdowns. Not a good look. I uh, and you watch Kyle Pitts play. It's like something's it. it I he I, did randomly get a touchdown after I went out of my way to yep. say he's not going to get a touchdown. I did give myself a slight out. I go maybe he gets his annual touchdown this game, and he did. <sighs> this is a tricky one. What's the trick? Because you can't take the Panthers. Oh yeah, that's there's nothing else to okay, break cool. down. And so the we're going to be donkeys here too. The Panthers, yeah, dude. I don't care who's betting on okay. games. Um, yeah, I agree. It's week fifteen. Uh, they're uh, the Panthers are what dead last in rush defense, and that's they the fired only- their entire offensive staff. This yeah. should be surprising. Uh, to did anyone. you see the shots of the head coach? The guy looks completely lost. I mean, they promoted a special teams coach, and the reason they lost the game was because they l- got a punt blocked. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And and. Uh, I mean, as bad as Desmond Ritter looks, Bryce Young looks. Bryce Young's the worst quarterback in the NFL by margin. Tommy DeVito looks noticeably better. Uh, Jake Whoa. Browning looks noticeably better. I would say Carson Wentz better than Bryce Young Whoa. right now. Here, here's a fun nugget, Sean. Did, but, did you pay, know all the Falcons can do right is run the ball, and that's the only. That's the Panthers yeah. are horrible at stopping running the ball. That, now, granted, Arthur Smith is still splitting carries between Bijan Robinson. And Tyler Algier, he oh. must be a listener to the podcast. That's the only <laughs> way you would think, hey, we need to get Algier more carries. We need well, to <laughs> help cash the SGP guys bet on Tyler Algier. So God bless you, Arthur Smith. He's also playing Cordero Patterson. I mean, it's like he yeah, does. Yeah, he listen must to listen to the show. He's like, oh, he's a top ten <laughs> NFL guy. I gotta play him. Um a lot of the a lot of the Falcons offensive line is on the injury report. Uh but yeah, I mean, they, they this Panthers team. I'm pretty sure if you just play in DFS, the running back going against the Panthers, you're you're set to to have a nice floor and a ridiculous ceiling. I mean, we joked about it earlier in the week, but Bryce Young, like dead serious, are you taking Bryce Young over any other of these rookie quarterbacks? Maybe Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. Will Levis? No. Whoa, whoa. No. That looks really bad. No. Right? Dude. Like Anthony Richardson and CJ Stroud, it's like take that off the table. They're clearly in a different planet. Yeah. Will Levis? <laughs> Anthony Richardson played what? Four games? Four games. <laughs> different planet. And you're like, oh, no way. It's no not way. even close. Uh, Will, and I was out on Anthony Richardson. Yeah. Will Levis, another guy I was out on, 100% should not have been drafted after Bryce. Young. Dude, Will Levis, I mean, dog. he has some dog in him. He, he just looks like an NFL quarterback. I know. It should be more complex than that, but you're like, he drops back to pass. He's a guy who has the size and arm strength and playmaking ability to come back and win that Dolphins game. 
We have not seen one fucking bright spot out no. of Bryce Young. Not one. And like it, not even garbage time stuff. I would even go watch the Tommy DeVito pass t- passing touchdown to Isaiah Hodgins where he rolls out and s- hits him in the corner of the end zone. We've not even seen that throw from Bryce Young all year. An undrafted guy. A guy who's only on the team cuz he's a local kid from Jersey. Bryce Young's bad. Panthers are the Panthers wrecked their franchise. Like the Panthers are not going to be good for a decade. Clip that. It's going to be a long time before they and yet, figure it out. This is the most this this is the single most terrifying spot on the card. <laughs> and I I was never Why? Cuz you're laying 3 on the road with the Atlanta Falcons, Desmond Ritter on the road, uh, Arthur Smith and his his propensity to lose games when things are going right. Uh, uh, just uh, all of that. Uh, to me though, it's it's a rare case where Arthur Smith massive coaching advantage. They fired their entire offensive coaching staff. <laughs> it is a rare coaching advantage. Falcons by a million. Smith. Yeah, I I got nervous at times uh, when the Saints were playing the Panthers because the Panthers were outgaining them. They were moving the ball, and I'm like, oh my god, are they going to backdoor this? And then next thing you know, it's 28-6. The Panthers completely collapse. So no, thank you. Falcons. Fun, Falcons roll. Fun nugget about Bryce Young. He um so they played the Saints last week. Tommy DeVito plays the Saints this week. Let's see who looks better. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> Hear that? A confident Kramer. Ah, I'm just saying. Bryce, Bryce Young looked pretty bad last week. Chicago heads to Cleveland. Uh, this, this Colby would say this is the this is a football game that's going to be played like football games are meant to be played. Browns laying three here, minus one sixty five on the money line. Chicago plus one forty. Thirty seven and a half is the total. This was at three and a half. It's come down. I think there's some optimism around um, this Bears team with some of the injury news to the Browns uh, offensive line pretty banged up. Uh, certainly think you, you at some point you have to wonder like when is Flacco going to take that hit that's going to cause the problem yeah. because all these offensive linemen are out. Uh, you know a number of rest days also so the DMPs. Uh, maybe looks a little scarier than it is, but they they are working. They're thin on the offensive line. I think they're down to their maybe one starter from before the season. And, uh, but it's still Cleveland at home, right? It's still Cleveland at home. It's still now. Uh, d- we Justin. F- I think we have to circle Justin Fields when just when he plays the Lions in general. He's gonna look great versus the Lions. Then he'll go back to being a pumpkin the next week. Against a very difficult uh, defense, that very difficult matchup. I uh, so this is interesting because you mentioned the O line injury. They've lost three tackles now for the year. Um, Ago Bont. They also lost Ago Bonia or Oconquo, wow. uh, defensive end, who was actually second in uh, on the team in sacks. Got that one out there. Yeah. Um, and and the Bears are the best defense that Joe Flacco has has faced so far. And the Bears defense, kind of a different defense since they added Montez Sweat. You know, both sides again, this is a, a lot of these handicaps where both sides are kind of scary. You're either backing Joe Flacco as a favorite, which I can do depending on the matchup, or you're backing um Justin Fields on the road. Now I know they've looked a little bit better. But they've still not looked amazing on the road. I mean, the Bears are two and thirteen straight up last fifteen games on the road. They just beat the Jags, who are a better team. It's true. More equipped to defeat their defense. More equipped to hurt their injured offensive line. But I think the the Jags passing defense is noticeably worse than the um than the the Bears passing defense. Like I think the Bears defense could give Flacco a little bit of trouble. And you know, Flacco, he is a statue back there. He needs his time. A- again, this is tough for me to get to the Bears because Justin Fields loses this game. Like yeah. you, you've seen this. You've seen this. Uh, well, and, and last last nugget, Browns have only allowed 181 rushing yards to the quarterback. So again, maybe that's some of the uh, that stat is some of who they've faced. But and that's a, this is the other thing, Ryan. I was hearing a lot of people on their recaps going, well, uh, Trevor Lawrence was clearly limited against his Browns team, limping around there on one leg. Disagree. I was like, I thought he looked pretty good. Like a couple times he scrambled, he looked pretty effective, and then he was like kind of slow after that. But I thought, 
I, I thought his ball, his like release and stuff was fine. He threw three interceptions. Played a great game. I but I, 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 well, he threw three picks. I don't know. I wouldn't say great in the game, but um, I it, thought he was. It's effective. a game in Cleveland. You're always gonna have a mess. You still got yeah. the, got the team to within a, a fairly close margin to getting it done. I mean, they they missed covering by a half point, a point. And so I guess like if you just if you just if you just use that as the comparison, Jags versus Bears, they're not the same team. So why is this the same number? Uh, uh Sebastian, aka SGPN Doc, is saying Joe Flacco three hundred plus passing yards, three straight games. Uh, Watch out! Look out! Of course, the the one game we play is passing yards ladder. The first one he doesn't get there against the Rams, even though that was a decent um, spot. Terrell pointing out how I shitted all over Brownie the Elf, and now the Browns dominate at uh, home. I'm in on the with elf. Brownie the Elf. Hey, listen, superstitions change. I'm you in know, on one, the elf. One slot machine gets hot, the other gets cold. I there is a circle. How's the slot? I go, Sean. There's something to this elf. Uh, and I was on the Browns. I bet the Browns. I was close to locking them up. I liked them, and I liked that sweat that Doug P gave us at the end of the game with the two point conversion. I'm on the Browns here. Cleveland yeah. minus three still feels a hair short. I I'm slightly worried about the Bears defense, how it's been better, but I think at the end of the day, you're going to be happier on the home team here. Oh, Cleveland's very banged up, so maybe maybe this is like a hero win for Justin Fields, but I'll I'll bet against. Yeah, it. at some point, these injuries are going to catch up to Cleveland. I uh, was DMing with Brad Ward, the host of the Eyes All on Cleveland a podcast. If you're a if you're a Cleveland sports fan, check that app. He was saying he still thinks they get the job done, but um, it, it, not like not in blowout fashion. Uh, yeah, we you know Stefanski, coach of the year, feels like no, oh, come on, he, he won't, no no chance. Like yeah, I don't I don't even know like what. <laughs> Wait, Ryan. I, Someone I, has to win something from Cleveland if I, they make the playoffs. I'm I'm just remembering this. Did you? I feel like we didn't talk about it in the show. We should have played the clip. Maybe Josh can still find it. But um, Rex Ryan was talking, was breaking down the Kadarius Tony uh, foot off sides, and he goes, "Well, you know, I love toes, but I don't love them in the neutral zone. You can't do that." It's like, whoa. <laughs> I don't Jesus. think it, that was funny because I don't said think that he, on a Disney channel. I, I don't think he ever denied loving toes. And no. then this was like the early uh, version of like kink shaming, where I was like, "Hey, this guy just loves his wife's toes. It's kind of romantic." Yeah, but we can still make fun of him, right? Um, J- Josh, if you can find that clip, it was uh, it was pretty funny. It might be there on the old uh, X. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, Rex Ryan. Maybe I fell for some fake news, but I what? swore I. Maybe it's some AI generated clip, but you gotta, I. You gotta be I care- enjoyed what I saw. <laughs> got to be careful with the AI nowadays. <laughs> it's everywhere. Uh, Tampa. Oh wait, we got All it. All right, let's see if we can get so, the uh, so get the audio like here. Says, like, back there, Rex said it's a toe. He it's says a toe I don't like. Where it says, like uh, what, what'd you say? I just said this is a toe I don't like. <laughs> oh, that was what it was. Like this is a toe I, like I don't toe. like. I don't like this toe. Come on, line up on freaking. <laughs> this is a toe I don't like. All right, so I kind of messed it up, but the <laughs> joke was uh, it's still better. there. It's, that's a better version. <laughs> Uh, oh man! Shout out to Rex Ryan. That is a disgusting. Act. We all need to go eat a snack. There's some sometimes. freaks out there, Ryan. Be careful. Uh, I mean, uh, might be my all-time favorite hard knocks moment too, when he broke the team down with "Let's go get a snack." <laughs> <laughs> Just like an all-time fat guy drop. All right, we got Battle of the Bays. The Tampa Bay Bucks head to the road for the second straight week. Take on the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay coming off Monday Night Football, where they got embarrassed by Tommy Cutlets. No, no big deal there. Everyone oh, knows killed that a lot one. of. I'm sure a lot of people in our Survivor were on the uh, Packers. There. Never should have been laying that many points. That was no, it was high. Also, Saquon uh, tried to give the game back. He, he must have had. So said the Packers in a tease or something. Some bad, uh, bad throws from Jordan Love, who had been uh, getting some flowers over the last couple of weeks. Packers laying three and a half here, minus one eighty on the money line. Bucks plus 150. 42 is the total. Strangely, um, this is a flow chart game. Really? Green Bay owns Tampa Bay. Yeah. One and fourteen straight up over the last fifty. Well, now a lot of that they had a better quarterback. Oh, what? <laughs> We're not but but it's a flow chart, Sean. And uh it is a great color, a great uh jersey matchup here. 
but we we also leaned into the idea that these Florida boys coming north to the the the, the win- frozen the, tundra, the wintry tundra of Green Bay. This is a this is a good nugget from uh, Walter Football. NFC South teams, Ryan, are eleven and twenty five ATS against non divisional opponents. So pretty easy formula there. Okay. Are you pl- are, if you're playing someone outside of the NFC South? Whoop. Um, you know, you your stats might be inflated. Uh, here's the here's the rough spot. Packers are coming off a short week, uh, and Jordan Love looked really l- rough. Like it wasn't just a couple drop balls. A good defense. Um, yeah, the de- defense has been playing well. They did get Jaden Reed going somehow. He had eight catches and didn't hit his over 40 and a half receiving yards that I gave out. He did. Sean was he did, pretty pissed. He did rush for a, like they kept, I couldn't get any of those fucking pop passes to save my life. It was all <sighs> technically behind the line of scrimmage. So they were all counted for rushes. I knew he would have, I knew he was going to be involved. Eight catches. How do you not get fucking 40 yards? It's fucking loser ass Packers team. Uh, Christian Watson probably out again, but I mean, you saw Drake London go for 172. You imagine the Packers will be able to exploit some stuff against this Bucks defense. Packers. Baker on the road isn't quite the same, although I do like Mike Evans in a bounce back spot here, Ryan. But ultimately, I think you got to take the pack here, laying the number. Was God the injury that Godwin had a couple weeks ago? That was not his knee. Right? I don't know what's been up with Godwin. Or like, Godwin he, ha- he's got a knee injury this week, and I, I think it's an interesting game because. You know, the, another one of these where you look at that, you glance at the Green Bay injury report, and you're like, "Wow, a lot of a lot of guys on the report. A lot of them are limited." Green Bay's definitely been fucking about with the the way they're listing a lot of people. Um, meanwhile, like it does seem like a lot more of the Tampa guys may actually be trending towards being out. Yeah, and so um, it sounds like there's more doubt in Vita Vea this week than there was last week. Uh, Devin White once again. I, 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 I would view this as another awesome Week 15 playoff. Game I, I'll say this: between two I don't teams think, that have a chance. I don't. I don't think this is a must-win game for the Bucks at all. They don't need this game. I mean, yeah, they technically <laughs> need this game, but they don't need this game. Uh, this is like they don't need d- this game, and they don't need the the game at home against the Jags. If you all they need to do is win at home against the Saints and yeah. at the Panthers the last two weeks. You're They'll win the right. division. You're probably right. If you if you don't listen to our college pick, Sean has effectively given uh, FCS South Dakota State uh, a look ahead spot in the first two round or the the last two rounds of the Was playoffs that we've covered. No, you, I mean we, you, Villanova backdoor. You, you were thing. right the first time. We have yet to find out if you're right the second time. Uh, yeah, I think once again lay the three and a half. Don't take it. I I, I what I. I think the reason that even though they're very injured, you might feel good about the Packers. It does seem like Aaron Jones potentially has a chance. It does seem Jair Alexander. This is the week. What is going on with Green Bay, where they just they 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 act like these? It happened with Bakhtiari. It drove me crazy every time I'd read like, well, Bakhtiari looks like he's trending in the I, right direction. I think they Jair thought- Alexander has been almost ready to play for like two months. You want my honest opinion? Sure. I think they thought they could beat the giants without some of these guys. And they probably said, yeah, will like, well, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. This don't is, worry about it. This Jair. is a, this is a empty the bucket uh, game. Yeah. Matt LaFleur's bucket a little, little deeper than uh, Mr. Bowles. Maybe. You always lay three, three and a half, Sean. Come on, we know that. And by the way, um, although this does not bode well for the fact that we took Denver earlier, the back-to-back road spot um, trend has been dipping and dipping as the season's gone on. It's it's up to tw- uh, twenty-three and thirty-one ATS, so forty-three percent, getting pretty strong there. Uh, and as you'd imagine, the later in the season, the worse it becomes. So next up, go pack, go. Another situation like that. Uh, yeah, sh- shout out to the Dick Puncher. Uh, probably was pretty sadly in the Meadowlands. Hopefully, uh, he, his life, he had that sweet cheese top hat going. Hopefully, his life wasn't threatened like yours uh, oh, on that fabled on, night where you almost didn't escape the swamplands of New Jersey. Houston on a back-to-back road spot. Pro- probably, maybe, who knows? Maybe C.J. Stroud can get through that concussion protocol like everyone else is getting through in a week. It does sound like Stroud might not play though. Um, yeah, I don't think he does. Texans are also a close your eyes special. Oh no. Uh, meanwhile, 
all of a sudden Will Levis and the Titans are laying three in this divisional matchup. It was three and a half on the look ahead the other way, Sean. Tennessee coming on short rest here, minus 140 on the money line. Houston plus 120. 38 is the total. This is again Will Levis looks solid. I I I think that Will it's Levis amazing win. will make some mistakes for sure, but this Houston team is banged up. It's not just CJ Stroud, it's Nico Collins, it's Tank Dell. Yeah, no, uh, the, all their receivers are hurt. Basically all their weapons on offense that aren't running backs. I think even Noah Brown popped up yeah. on the injury report. So, you know, I, I, this is t uh, Tennessee long injury report, but I think the same kind of thing we were talking about with green Bay. A lot of guys who are just kind of, you know, like D hop little, little vet rest kind well, of and, stuff. And, and also DeAndre will Levis Hopkins. on there with an ankle. Well, D hops a fake one. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But, but will Levis ankle injury. Is that real? Uh, some other guys, uh, here's the thing. We probably shouldn't be laying points with Yes. Will Levis, but we also probably shouldn't be taking Davis Mills. Davis Mills five twenty and one straight up. No, thank you. Titans have won five of the last seven against the Texans, and you you know you might be thinking, hey, this isn't my mom's Derrick Henry, but Derrick Henry does own the Texans in twelve games. He's run for thirteen hundred and eighty yards. Different defense, right? But still, this could be a Derrick Henry game. I mean, again, I get it. Will Levis is a favorite, not who you want to, not the situation you want to be in, but and and a massive letdown opportunity what's versus the, we Davis look. Mills in any football game. He will have a week of practice. He's he's probably not the worst. Uh, any chance they put they throw uh, Keenum out there? Oh yeah, definitely. Really? Yeah, I mean, why? I, you think there's I, a no? Have they when, it? when CJ Stroud. Went out. They brought in Davis Mills. So that uh, that's what I'm basing it off of. No, they I haven't I'm made just, an announcement. Yeah, it, it, well, sometimes the backup is different than the guy that they'd rather have play for whatever and, reason. And maybe and maybe there is something to to Keenum on a full week. It, here's the thing. This comes down to one of these gambling situations where I'm not going to feel stupid if I pick Tennessee, bet on Tennessee. I will feel stupid if Davis Mills trots out there and just gets his ass kicked. Is Tennessee I, eliminated? I, no, they're still. I'm pretty sure they're, they're still technically alive. They're five and eight. And they, oh, holy shit, Sean! They they're five and eight, and they play the Texans twice in the next three weeks. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, this is. Yeah, I, I guess you got to take the home team, but I I don't. Wait, I can't go against the closure eyes special, even though there's extenuating circumstances. I mean, are they completely knocked out of the division? Because if they went out and Jaguars. No, you know what? This is exactly what Tennessee does. They win some they improbable win bullshit, and then they they shit all over themselves. Uh, hopefully, Will Anderson uh, is, is not a real injury. He didn't practice either. I, I guess I'll take the closure. Eyes yeah, I, I I I'm going Will Levis. Give me the Titans. Will Levis is a fun guy to watch. Uh, creates electricity. Nah, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. The Giants of New York featuring Mr. Tommy DeVito. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Schwartz Gambling Podcast. The Giants logo has been replaced with a uh, <laughs> Italian flag making the Ryan, what are the fingers called? Do we I always think of this as I love the announcers. Capiche. He's doing the Italian thing. I think, da, 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 da. I think this is one name? of those like you know, universal terms. Like it can be like a it could also be like a go fuck yourself, you know? I think I think uh, the idea of it becoming this uh, movement uh, iconic symbol is very hilarious. I would imagine like it's not that far off from like where you you throw your okay. hand up under your chin and you say you know you know what's the official. So it's officially called Shevui, um, in Italian, uh, is one of the best known hand gestures of Italy. In English, it's sometimes referred to as pinch fingers or finger purse. It is meant Finger to express purse. disbelief at what the other person is saying or doing and or to ridicule their opinions. Um, I think it just became like a universal thing. So that's what I was saying. It's like it kind of it, it can mean a lot of things. Yeah. What do you want? What? But, what are you uh, but talking I, I about? do think most of the time, like uh, here's here's the where I would picture it, right? Like I always saw it as like an old Italian man walks to a deli counter to order some mortadella, and the he doesn't like the price, and he's like, what the, f you know? Or maybe maybe uh, they try to give him some old fucking prosciutto, 
He goes to the <laughs> That that's that's I think the way that it or or maybe you're on your porch and someone someone like uh bumps into your mailbox, you're like, hey, fucking <laughs> Gabagool, broccoli Gabba rob. Ghoul. Oh man, I'm getting hungry again. Get some fucking gravy. All right. Uh Giant Saints, Saints, um <laughs> the, the 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 Giants logo really is fabulous. The Saints are looking ahead to a Thursday night battle. Uh, Giants again. They're just riding the wave. People are comparing it to Linsanity. People are comparing <laughs> it to Tebow. Yeah, uh, I mean it's. I I'm I heard nicknames our, like the passing Paisano. I heard the, our buddy Jared Smith talking on uh, his show that he's like, I always like fading. You know, whatever the guy getting all the hype and that situation. And I, uh, for the most part, I agree. Like I'm looking to fade. You think Jared knows hype. how to swim? Yeah. Okay. Uh, public personas, you know. Oh, everyone's loving this bandwagon. You genuinely you want to fade that yeah. in betting, but this Saints team at home is so bad. They're one in seven ATS. Again, coming back to that same Walter football set, NFC South teams eleven and twenty five ATS against non divisional opponents. Well, the one was last week. In fairness, what do you mean? The one cover. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, and they played. They're they're one and seven. Their one cover was against the fucking Carolina Panthers. They didn't look that good. They got Asterix. outgained by the Panthers. They're still pretty banged up. And for a team that won twenty eight to six, you usually don't see your veteran, respected offensive lineman getting in a screaming match with the quarterback. It is just bad vibes. My greatest fear all is around. Jameis. Any chance we get a Jameis sighting in this week? No, that changes everything. But clearly, Dennis Allen is doing everything he can to not play. Uh, not play uh, Jameis Winston, including playing a concussed, uh, broken ribs Derek Carr. Uh, Saints are third in the league with rush yards allowed, 355. So this could be another DeVito scrambling uh, moment. Now, now certainly, you know, Cinderella could turn into a pumpkin here. Who's That's Cinderella? Carr? Tommy DeVito. That little bitch Carr with his eyeliner. <laughs> Is that who you're referring to? Uh, Saints are six and fifteen against the spread at home since twenty twenty one. We just mentioned one and seven this season, but it's it's been a problem uh, for them uh, the whole time. Twenty fourth in rush defensive DVOA. So again, decent matchup here for Saquon Barkley if he can decide uh, to hang on to the ball. Uh, you know, Saints have maybe a, a little bit of a tougher defense here. I think this is just going to be like a three four point game. You got to take the Giants here. You factor in the way the Giants offense has played at times this season, you really start gaining a little bit of a respect for what the defense oh, has done. Oh, and Ryan, shout out to Jared. He's in the chat saying swim <laughs> with the fishes. Ah, you got those concrete <laughs> boots, you know? Send you down send you down to a no, I, he was he was making a good catch. I was listening to his uh Bet US NFL show. Uh they got uh Fezzik in Vegas Chris on there. Book it about and he was making some good points about uh, you know, hey, this is a spot where you know, all the hype around DeVito, I, which I, I, I kind of buy into if it wasn't the saints at home laying six, like it's just such, I, I'm looking to fade the saints almost more than I am looking to fade the giants right now. Better food, uh, Cajun or Italian. Oh, I mean, I, I Italian just cause it's so universal. And there, there's a restaurant. Cajun's very good. Though. Restaurant in Los Angeles. Uh, uh, maybe that place downtown. Two boots. Oh, two boots. The Italian place. Well, it's a ta it's two boots, like Louisiana and Italy. Like that was the whole angle. Oh, okay. Two boots oh was, man, I never knew. You that. missed that? Oh yeah, no. It, it was, no, because they would have like weird, yeah, like, like Cajun pizza. Yeah, like weird. Uh, like I totally missed that hybrid shit. Um, yeah. Uh, to me, that this comes down to a very simple uh, handicap of one. The Saints run defense is not very good. Uh, I think it's this is another game where the Giants you mentioned the the quarterback run game. We saw them start to work Wendell Robinson into the run game, something I think they always plan to do. And I think Barkley a little bit of a redemption redemption spot loading and on the other side uh, uh, d have you watched Carr just break? You don't think wink Martindale's gonna come in and break <laughs> some damn pipes. Like how Brian, we you keep your you keep going with your pressure breaks pipes yeah. analogy. It's it's not mine. It's Wink. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, I don't want to. It's uh, oh not, you're taking it from Wink. Yeah, I'm taking no, it. From I, Wink. I would say also like prop wise, I do think the check down to Alvin Kamara. Um, we'll see what his reception prop is, but I think there's gonna be a ton of dink and dunk stuff because I don't think the. I mean this this Giants defense. 
really it every, you know every, we're 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 caught up in Divino mania here but I would say the Giants defense has been playing at a pretty high level and and higher than you think. You know what they didn't do last week against the Packers, a team that's very good running the ball. They didn't play Dexter Lawrence on first or second down. Mm. He was he would came in for pass rushing situations yeah. only. And then so th- this is a positive sign. I I don't look now, Sean. Giants uh by the now they own the tiebreaker over the the, the they beat the Packers. So they got that tiebreaker. Saints another team kind of mini in the low key in the hunt giants are going to Tommy DeVito. If Tommy, De, I'll say this two things. One, how wink Martindale isn't getting wrapped up in this, uh, this Italian fever that uh, is going on between big Dom and Tommy DeVito. But Sean, if, if Tommy DeVito can win this game, <laughs> yeah, somehow, somehow wink Martindale is, isn't the most Italian guy on that team. Now. Yeah, Don wink Martindale. I mean, he's the fucking guy. <laughs> he has Don in his name his name's and w- no one's making Italian references about right, him. Uh, and, and so, but, but just imagine I come this. to pay I, my I don't, respects I'm to not, the Don of I, the defense. I'm definitely not looking ahead. But the idea that we could be seeing a big Dom coming off a of suspension Christmas Day versus mm. Tommy DeVito, oh Italian festival. It's gonna be Italian. They're gonna have an Italian fucking festival <laughs> There's gonna in the be parking the, lot. The seven fishes. It's gonna be bonkers. <laughs> and then meanwhile, Boston Scott's gonna put up two touchdowns. Break your F- heart. Fish around. was on Christmas Eve. Um, oh, at least in my Italian household. So Gi- Giants uh, plus six. Uh, once again, getting six points against a crap team. Giants is the play. Hey, uh, just a friendly reminder: this show is sponsored by Better Help. Oh man, holiday season. It's fun. It's enjoyable. But let's be honest: it can be super stressful. You gotta buy the gifts, the travel, the in-laws. Some of which you don't like. Some of which are very annoying and stressful. There's some drama. Oh, so and so's gonna be there. I don't talk to so and so. I can really stress you out and and take away a lot of the enjoyment that you would normally try and get out of the holidays. You know, you're sweating out some bets. You got in-laws giving you grief. Um, it, it helps to talk to someone. It really does. Um, you know, if you. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Don't stand up. I'm trying to do this read about your about mental health. I can't have you walking around in Italian boxers. Um, so yes, uh, it is important to t- to try to yeah. If you're going through stuff, like don't be afraid to talk to someone. Honestly, it can make a world of difference. If you're thinking about uh, trying out therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible. Get away from me. Flexible, suited to your schedule. Uh, fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com/sgpn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com/sgpn. Kramer. Woo. What were you getting a little? It was getting too hot. <laughs> the heat was in the hat. The heat was in the hat. Well, hold on. Let me let me say that again. Is that was the heat in the hat? The heat was all over the hat. <laughs> I I do have a fun. Uh, so I go to the mall to pick up the hat, and naturally, Sean, you wouldn't believe it. Order something online, and they have no idea where this thing is. And I'm like, look, it's just this. Uh, Sir, I'm really sorry. We don't have any more larges. And of course, you know, I have a large head. So I'm like, well, just bring me the small. <laughs> Let's see if it works. And I put it on my head. And this old lady, you can tell she was trying to be nice. She goes, oh, that's not going to work. So, uh, long story short, we found someone who knew what they were doing. They got the extra large here. So, fits my head nicely. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, three more early games to go Jets, Dolphins, Dolphins off Monday night. Uh oh, the, the is Tyree kill the MVP based on what we saw in this game alone? I, I certainly think it strengthens his case. They looked like complete shit when he left the game and wasn't able to play. Uh, this is a great, great nugget. Uh, shout out to producer Josh. Uh, apparently, Tyree kill's wife texted him and said, "You better get your ass back in the game, dog." <laughs> really? Yeah. What does she have like an MVP Dur- ticket? She's sweating out during the game. I mean, this is the, now you know why Tyree Kill is such a dog. Um, uh, meanwhile, all sorts of quarterback drama on the Jets side. Uh, leaks coming out saying the Jets told uh, 
who knows? I'm, I'm not getting into the mix. I just know that Zach Wilson was our player of the the week last week. Big big shift on the look ahead here. First time a, a player who is reluctant to accept the starting job has won a NFC player or AFC well, player of the week. Well, let's talk about this. Um, I, again, I I don't maybe I I typoed this and I'm gonna double check it while we're talking. But look ahead comes from eight and uh, thir- thirteen and a half to eight and a half. Uh, Jets now uh, plus three thirty on the money line. Dolphins minus four twenty five. Thirty seven is the total. This is another like situation where do I really want to take the Jets off a win, off a deflated number? But then on the other side, the Dolphins. I mean, uh, I don't know if for TMZ fans might have missed it, but their center Connor Williams, he's on IR. Um, you Former know, they, cowboy. What's up? Former Cowboy Connor yeah. Williams. Uh and then you watch Tua like he didn't play that great against the Jets last time. Now, granted that was in Jersey, but uh only two hundred forty three yards passing, two interceptions. You are able to run against this Jets team. So Moster, Achan, Moster had ninety four for two touchdowns. They could get that going. Dolphins have won ten of the last twelve. And how do you beat the Dolphins? You beat the Dolphins if you can slow down the run. Which this Jets team actually isn't as good as their defense is. They struggle to do that. Like you beat the Dolphins by stopping the run and clogging up their play action, um, play action passing. There, Dolphins are also coming off short rest, but they're also coming off an embarrassing loss. And I told myself I wasn't gonna pick the Jets anymore. Now, <laughs> <laughs> but then Tyreek Hill, he's not gonna be a hundred percent, but he's gonna be out there. What are you doing here, Ryan? Well, I mean, I I was sitting here um, just trying to pull up the graph to see like this line movement. It's certainly you never want to get on the wrong side of this type of of movement. You certainly like what you saw in the Jets last week. Zach Wilson, when he makes good throws, they look good. Now the difference is that the, the defensive style of how Vic Fangio is going to attack him much. Like I said last week against Will Levis, I did not like it for Will Levis. He, he proved me wrong. Uh, I don't really know what to think. I, 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 I don't think you, you mentioned Tua not looking good. I think you can watch every single game by the dolphins this year and ha- and see stretches where Tua doesn't look good. And they're bailed out because they make big play after big play. They have all the speed yeah, and it works. But how, Sean, how many points did they score against the Jets earlier in the season? Well, and and of course, and one of that was a defensive touchdown yes. off the uh, hell Mary, which really swung the game and, and swung the spread. But you could also see this game being, I mean, Ryan, a, as a market dynamics guy, thirteen and a half to eight and a half. It's a uh, pretty big swing. Uh, yeah, let me see what the actual o- the this week opener was. Uh, it, it's a big swing. It does it matter though? Yeah, I'm not gonna take the Jets. Fuck it. You're just you're out on the Jets. We're yeah. I'm gonna before I'm gonna stand... last week we said the they've won every game at home by two touchdowns. Yeah. So they're covering big numbers. They do well as a big favorite at home, they, or they just do well in general as a home favorite. I'm gonna take Miami here. I I'm not gonna lock this up because the the Jets um, defense is a little scary. But again, I, I I don't I'm I'm feel comfortable betting against Zach Wilson once again here. If they go on the road, well, th- that's the other thing. Like you could easily see Miami being up three late, and uh, all right, still trying, and then getting that touchdown, and then Zach Wilson gets the ball back, turns the ball over, or doesn't convert on fourth down, they win thirty to twenty, and you're like, oh, what was I doing betting the Jets? Uh, Dolphins is the play. Give it's me the chalky as hell, but. Give me the Jets. I think I, I think you have, and it's un, again, it's unfortunate we we lost all the value. Um, but you also have a nasty look ahead spot. You got Dallas and Baltimore on deck for Miami. This isn't the most important part. And I like Robert Sala against you the second time, especially when your shit's gimmicky. And mm-hmm. maybe you don't have Achan who missed practice today. So, J E T S Jets Jets Jets. All right, we're done with the er, oh wait, one no, more early one game. More Kansas early City and New England. For some reason, this I, w- was this game flexed early. I yeah. think this was originally a later game. They did some weird thing with the yeah. Kansas City. You're a rotation number guy. You're all thrown off by this one. Kansas City heads to New England to take on the Patriots. Patriots coming off Thursday night. Chiefs laying seven and a half. 
here on the road. Minus 345 on the money line. Patriots plus 275. 37 and a half. 37 is the total. Sorry. Uh, the move off the look ahead was 10 to seven and a half. And uh, yeah, I saw this one. Uh, shout out to to one of my all time favorite New York Giants. Uh, said that Kadarius Tony is a coach killer. <laughs> <laughs> really stood out as a. I mean, a lot of people thought the Chiefs uh, really. Why couldn't he? The have, why couldn't he have picked the Super Bowl to have one of his games where he kills the team? Well, if you're a Giants fan, it's because you uh, he was deployed to defeat the Eagles. Oh, okay, I get that. Um, I mean, I don't like it, but I get it. Yeah, uh, Bill Belichick. Also, now we're hearing reports about. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, well, like, there was that rumor that yeah, he was basically he lost that game in Germany. You know, Robert Kraft ton of ties to the uh, to Germany and uh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I'm just good I'm just, Germ West Germany or yeah, East Germany. Good, good Germany okay. and and that um, hey, his time with the organization is going to be done. It is weird to have your, the coach getting fired after a win. Normally, you don't hear that. Uh, there was a uh, it's like a college thing where they like. They met on a Friday to fire him. They let him coach the game on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah. They fire him on a Monday, even though he won. Josh, uh, producer Josh, if you can pull up the photo I tweeted out of Bill Belichick at his press conference, it was um, it's pretty enjoyable. Uh, it, it is really like uh, <laughs> I'll give Josh a second to pull it up. Um, but yeah, I mean, this Chiefs defense is still pretty good. I mean, look at this Bill Belichick. Like, <laughs> it looks like he's ready to. I think I said he's gonna squeegee your windows for a couple of dollars, but Whoa. it looks like he's about to like warm his hands next to a trash barrel fire. <laughs> what is going on, dude? You look super homelessy. I get it. Your your thing is I don't care about fashion, but come on, man. Like, have some pride in your he's appearance. A football guy. What are you? What are you? What are you? Fashion? Uh, you judging the man out of his appearance? Nova. He he looks hey, just yeah. looks super homeless. See, uh, sorry, unhoused individual, Bill <laughs> Belichick. Yo, uh, this is tough, right? Because I I do. They just lost Malik Cunningham too. Yeah. Oh, what about Signed the Malik the Cunningham package, Ryan? It's no long. It's the package has been moved to uh, the Ravens. Steffi Small is saying that's my dad at the YMCA. Yes, this looks like every dad. It reminds me of my dad when he uh, we went on a backpacking trip and it was like pouring down rain and then the next morning he was drying his shirt out by grilling it and it like multiple holes burned through his shirt and then he still wore the shirt not only for the rest of the trip but for like two or three years after until my mom finally threw it away. <laughs> So that's the most hilarious. You got a hold of. <laughs> it's the most hilarious thing that I can relate and, to. And it was such like, um, it was like '90s, like hyper color beach volleyball. No, you know, something my dad never played. It was just he refused to throw the t-shirt out till they <laughs> clawed. My mom clawed it from his hands. On principle, it was a really comfortable shirt. It smelled, uh, it smelled like campfire. It did. It really did. Uh, you know, Chiefs defense is still pretty good. So. It, and looking back in hindsight, maybe I should have been on the Pats because they do seem to always it, they always play the Jets and the Steelers well. I kind of overlooked that angle. It's certainly a get right game for the Chiefs. I do think they got something going here with Rashi Rice. Um, you know, but they are pretty good at defending the tight end. So I don't know if it's gonna be a Kelsey game. I do think I do think Rashi Rice will get it going here. And, you know, this I don't like. I didn't like what I saw uh, from the Chiefs after that game. Like super distracted about the play calling. Clearly, they're kind of pressing a little bit here. But at the end of the day, they also have massive talent disparity. And the Pats coming off a win feels like a good time to fade them. And we're and we're getting a few free points here. I mean, not a ton of you know key numbers between ten and seven and a half. Some would argue zero key numbers. But I I do think Chiefs laying seven and a half is what I'm going to do. Yeah, no Ramondre, so we're going to have more Zeke talk. Uh, th there is a certain element where I feel like whatever was broken about the Buffalo Bills, they snatched from the Chiefs, and now they're fixed. Mm. Maybe it's like a scepter. Yeah, it was a it was a Bills uh thing for, vibe for sure. To, to just. Normally, what I would say here is, well, Jesus, we're getting a situation where these guys have lost two in a row, and they're get, getting the Patriots off a win. The other side of that coin is 
they acted like little bitches. Like as much <laughs> as it's a like I know it's it's not it's not an attitude I wanted to back. Strange lack of accountability, which you know seems like they're they're a modern day football team. Uh, Kadarius Tony has not been cut. I I certainly I, I noticed. Uh, I, I Justin Ross was on the injury report as a full participant coming back from his suspension. Uh, once again, we get yes. the fan, the fantasy nerds are getting. Oh, excited it's gonna be a breakout time for him. I think in general the Chiefs like everything about this spot is, is delightful for the Chiefs, other than the fact that they clearly are not thinking about the Patriots. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I guess we take the points. You're taking the Patriots. Uh, I think. I mean, if this was a look ahead spot for the Chiefs, if the Chiefs have lost three out of their last four games, like I think there is a there's going to be an urgency out of this Chiefs team. I, I know they were distracted with this stupid ref shit, but I, I think. Again, I don't want to feel dumb on Sunday holding a Patriots plus oh, seven I and see. a half. This was originally Monday night. Yes, you're right. That was what uh, got flexed out. Oh, that's so disrespectful to the Chiefs. Yeah, another this uh, th that this will be the game I'll feel stupid about, but um, I, I can't take the that was a really disrespectful to the game of football performance for Patrick Mahomes. All right, another team that disrespects football on a week to week basis, the San Francisco 49ers. Super Bowl champs, congrats to the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, if every quarterback had the weapons Brock Purdy did, it would be easy. I I I, I love how people are getting so upset about this. They got so mad at Cam Newton for calling him a game manager. And then everyone else, if my man wants to speak on, you know, the the people defending Cam Newton, they're like, he's a Super Bowl MVP, or you know, he's a regular season MVP. He can chime in on the MVP race without everyone getting upset. It's like, dude, th that's the whole point about having opinions about sports. You say your opinion, then everyone else says, no, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, he's doing. This is my opinion. He's, he's doing, doing. He's everyone. We, we we don't have to respectfully listen to people's sports opinions. That's what's great about talking sports. He's allowed to put a video on social media. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah, and we're you know allowed what? to make fun of him. He's literally doing social media, and you know what I else? Even, I don't even disagree with some of his takes, but it was just so funny. The story became about people's reaction to Cam Newton. That's every story. Every story is more about the reaction than the actual story itself. Period. Uh, so uh, San Francisco. Uh, also uh, looking ahead, they got a big game against Baltimore on Monday night. They're going down to Arizona. Arizona coming off the bye, the very late bye week. Don't know how to handicap it. Laying 12 and a half for the Niners, minus 850 on the money line. Arizona plus 575. 48 is the total. If there is a freaking letdown spot for this Niners, it's this week. Nope, no, not going to do it. Give me the 49ers. Laying 12 and a half. Best team in the league. Wow, uh, this is hilarious. What happened? No, they're the best team. They in the got league. under they got under your skin. No, they're unstoppable. Oh wow. There's not a game they're <laughs> between now and the end of the season, there's not a game they're gonna lose. You guys won. You broke Sean. Um it's picking the Niners. 49ers only allowed 183 rushing yards of the quarterback. I'm not gonna take the Cardinals. 49ers, again, dominant. 20 Arizona is 28th in rush defensive DVOA. True. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel are gonna run all over him. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know why they're playing this game. So yeah, 49ers. I would play this, this up is, to this is confusing. I would play this up to 20 and a half. Give me the 49ers run. People are gonna think this is AI. No, this like, is well, what is this? Is this, this a is voice me, actor? Me taking the best team that's already won the Super Bowl. Congrats, San Francisco. Let's go. Uh so when I look at the schedule, which was under my uh, fedora over here. I see a team that has Arizona, then they have Baltimore, Washington, and the Rams. Really, this Baltimore game. So I guess you can I can make a case for it not being a look ahead spot as well. I do think that the Cardinals are much healthier. So, many are saying that uh, Kyle Shanahan is two six and one as a favorite of ten or more. I'm not saying that because they're going to win by forty. So Sean, who was the coordinator for the? Uh, the Eagles last year. I understand they already played a game. You don't, Jonathan don't, Gannon. Don't remind me that they already played a game earlier in the season. Yeah. Yep. So you don't. You're not. That's not part of your handicap at all. Uh, no, Ryan. Because the Got only it. reason 49ers lost that game was because Brock Purdy was hurt. And again, they're the best team in the NFL by a wide margin. Well, uh, 
I have them number one in my power rankings. Uh, got down on a bunch of Super Bowl futures. Should they just give them a? I've already got some Super Bowl merch with the with the 49ers winning it. Should they? T- I've already know. I've already getting ready. I'm I'm sitting on the sidelines getting ready to dump Gatorade on Brock. So, lock it up. This was uh, if we remember the first game, uh, Dobbs and the Cardinals were scrappy for a bit. It was 21 16. They did. They almost backdoored to it. Start except the fourth uh, quarter. Zach Ertz dropped that touchdown pass. Well, it took it took 49ers to scoring two fourth quarter touchdowns. So I like taking the points. Oh, okay. uh, AI Sean Sean Bot over there is clearly attempting what what it's we great what we call in the business a reverse jinx. No. No, what are you talking about? I didn't know we were into seed uh seeding reverse jinxes, but I like <laughs> it. Uh, all right, another no. another early afternoon. Only three games in the in the early afternoon window. So uh, again, choose your window wisely because you gotta you're going shopping at some point. So uh, you know, figure it out, plan ahead. Wash- got some fedoras to buy. Washington, the Commanders, also coming off a very late buy. They're taking on the Los Angeles Rams. Think we're gonna see a lot of Commanders fans out in SoFi? No, <laughs> might not be a team that's gonna take over the building. Eighty percent of the tickets on the Rams. Holy, holy Toledo. Uh, Washington still uh, be coached by Ron Rivera, still quarterback really? by Sam. Still Howell. Ron Rivera catching six and a half here, plus two forty on the money line. Rams minus three hundred. Looking ahead to that game against the Saints on Thursday night football. Uh, forty nine and a half is the total. I, the the Rams. I, I like this Rams team. I mean, shout out to them. Uh, they were certainly a live dog in that game. Uh, the points were never really in doubt. I mean, also not to be a, you know, look at the refs, but there was a number of uh, questionable blocks on that punt return in OT, but Rams kind of emptied the tank. I'm worried that, Hey, they flew out to the East coast, played this tough OT game against the Ravens. Now they're already looking ahead to Thursday night versus a team that's coming off a bye. They got to have it. I mean, the, the the beauty of the seventh wild or the seventh seed. Yeah, uh, everyone. Well, and then, but the 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 case for the Rams is Stafford, Cup, Nakua against this Commanders passing defense. Do you believe? So here's what I would ask you: Do you believe that Washington's going to come out off a of bye week and play hard for their coach? No, and I I would say when you have a shitty coach like Ron Rivera and Eric Bieniemy to some degree, more time Ooh. off hurts you. Maybe, I, I the other here's the other thing. Angle. But it's a big rest disparity thing too. Here's the other angle too. You have new ownership, and no one's talking about new ownership. Hope hoping to get that that franchise quarterback to kind of reset the franchise. New name, new merch. Caleb Williams, Drake May, Drake May, a North Carolina kid, just sliding right up into D.C. I, I think. I I can't see how Washington is. It does seem like if there's anyone that's tanking by leaving their coach out there, it's the Washington football team. Yeah, I mean, it, it scares me because the public's going to be all over this Rams team. Um, you know, both fading Washington and riding them after they look pretty good. But uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna take the Rams. <sighs> I I would also say that yeah, I mean, again, getting on the the donkey side of it, but. I Washington. I mean, again, they're, they're past defense. I mean, we've seen them against teams that can throw the football. Like what the Dolphins did. That wasn't yeah, even like is, a great game for the Dolphins. That's the angle. And they were at home. The jo- Tommy DeVito and Tyrod Taylor shredded this defense. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, one last time on the donkey trip. Donkey show. That's what they call it. Donkey show. 125 on the West Coast. Dallas, the Cowboys, they take on the Buffalo Bills. And if I'm not mistaken, the Dallas goes down video was Was had, a Bills fan. Yeah. Was a Bills fan. Buffalo laying two minus 130 on the money line. Cowboys plus 110. 51 is the total. Cowboys definitely. If I was going to do some satire where I said a team looks like they're on the uh, the, the the fast track to winning the Super Bowl. Um, it's it's the Cowboys more than the Niners for me. Uh, unfortunately, it's a, um, we're, we're really looking down the barrel of something scary this season. Uh, assuming Dak will get to the postseason and choke, but it is still the regular season. Meanwhile, the Bills, I think they stole the scepter from the Chiefs. They they are now fixed. 
Uh, Kadarius Tony dropped that too. Uh, like an idiot. I, I, my first thought is, well, um, not going to pick the Cowboys. So let's figure out a nice they way took down the chiefs, let's Ryan, like some brave men took down tower number oh seven. My. Wow. I'm, I'm doing my hanging Sean, out with Sean McDermott. Uh, who, who again, if you missed it, he did, uh, he did use a uh, 9 11 hijacker analogy to highlight how teamwork. <laughs> Why well, not? Was he highlighting how, like, these independent cells of people can all accomplish a unified goal when working hard? Like, what yeah. the fuck are you talking also, about? Also, they didn't really. <laughs> yeah, like, r- really, the, the teamwork you should be talking about is those people on, on uh, Flight 93 who actually took over the cockpit. Crashed the plane into the ground and avoided a lot of other people being killed. But I digress, right? I I think this is actually you know, a, that was a rugby player. Just, just so you know, smash <laughs> wasn't a soccer player. I'll tell you that much. Oh wow! It's wagon circling time for these Buffalo Bills. Um, I, I think I think this is a good spot for the Buffalo Bills. One, this Cowboys team. I mean, yes, they did beat the Eagles. Congrats. Uh, again, another Eagles had a, uh, you know, facing teams back to back off the extra rest. They got the best of them, but now Cowboys have to go on the road. They haven't gone on the road since a it, like pre Thanksgiving, Ryan. I think this is a different situation for the, the Cowboys. This is a tough spot. You had to go at bills at dolphins. And I think matchup wise, there's a lot of stuff going on uh, for this bills. You know, even though Eagles didn't look great, Jalen hurts was able to run the ball. I think Josh Allen, uh, they're in desperation mode. He's going to be able to scramble. And this is just a massive letdown spot for the Buffalo bills. Now the scary part is Josh Allen, nine games in a row with an interception, Josh Allen, 11 games with an interception, only two games without. So I think Scott Rochelle on our uh, VEASAN show gave out uh, Allen interception. It's, it's still, I mean, considering some guys are like minus 200, the fact that you can still get Josh Allen. Minus one fifty ish. I haven't seen this week's number, but that still feels like a a pretty good bet. AJ Epinesa, Micah Hyde not practicing, but I think the way you beat this Bills team is by running the football. Um, there are some opportunities in the passing game, but you're going outdoors, dome team, in weather, non conference spot, uh, coming off a big win. Uh, this is a real uh, gut check opportunity time. For the Cowboys, I, I like the Bills here. The Bills got nothing to lose playing at home. Uh, a couple of wild facts. Cowboys, this is only their third road game since their bye week seven. Uh, and their last road game was week 11. Mm. So there is something there, I would imagine. We're laying the points with the Bills, right? Yeah, this is one of the rare spots I'm looking to fade the Cowboys. I think even if I was independent, I would like mm. this spot for this Bills team. Bills got their confidence up. They're uh, they're they figured out the offense a little bit. Getting James Cook involved in the receiving game. Uh, are, you mentioned that on our pregame show, Ryan. Are we worried about? Oh man, that Sean. We found a way to get Cook into my lineup. I, oh. I had a lot of right ideas. I I don't think we talked about it, but I took down the big boy. And yeah, I just if had we gotten James Cook in there, we we would have a five figure cash for sure. Um, yeah, no, no reason to take the Cowboys here. No need to start. And while it won't be weather, I do think Dak uh, Dak's probably hoping he's numb. Maybe he's traveling with his anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. There you go. It's hard to not. It's hard to say anesthesiologist without sounding drunk or on anesthesia. Well, there's that middle section where it just you really got to get through it. Interesting combination of letters. Ravens, they're heading to Jacksonville. The hot tub will be bumping. 520 on the West Coast. Sunday night football. Ravens looking ahead to that Niner game. Maybe. Uh probably less likely than the Niners are. Uh R- Ravens head to Florida here, laying three, minus one fifty five on the money line. Jacksonville plus one thirty. Forty three is the total. Wow. There, strangely, uh, I didn't really mention it earlier for the Jets game, but strangely, there is expected to be a, a ton of weather in the Florida games. It's going to be wet in this one as well. Uh, once again, I think the weather probably helps the Ravens more than it does their opponent hmm. uh, and their run game. I do worry about. 
if Trevor Lawrence really did have a uh, high ankle sprain, like it's got to show at some point. I do think he was a little uh, ginger going side to side, not so much straight ahead. Um, maybe, maybe there being a it being a wetter game is, is tougher for him to operate. There, there's a lot to break down here because Ravens are now number two defensive DVOA, but man, I test that doesn't look like a great defense. Like just watching what Matt Stafford did coming into your house and throwing the ball all over. Uh, I think they're you. actually number one. No, I, I thought, well, I thought they were, they were number one last week and they're down to the number two. Double check. Um, either way, I, I think they're, um, I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting right. thing because the Jags are, are, have been pretty bad against the pass. I mean, you know, and the Jags just lost back to back games to Joe Flacco and Jake Browning. Now I know, you know, I know some of that's with um, our boy, uh, you know, uh, Goldilocks uh, missing some of that uh, Bengals game, but still, their deep the Jags defense has really let them down, and the Ravens had the deep uh, pass ball going, like uh, likely was getting shots. Um, Odell doesn't look cooked. Kind of interesting. They, they here. took the Rams' best shot, and they still won the game. Like no, they, like no. It, I mean, yeah, it's like. It, that's a, that was a weird game because in one way it's like, man, how do you let the Rams come in here and punch you in the mouth? But then the other way it's like, Sleepy oh, you, spot you answered a lot of the questions. You got back up. You you won the game in OT. Uh, but could the, is this Jags team going to lose this many games in a row? And I I don't like taking the Jags as a home favorite. Home dog though, kind of a different uh different bell different beast altogether. I mean, at some point we're going to see this Ravens team, put it all together. That game last week was the first game all season. They didn't have a 75% win probability in the fourth quarter. So you can, you definitely can use that uh, as an argument as to, Hey, they've blown some games. They should have won, but they've had control of every single game with the exception of last week, every single game, they've had some level of strong control in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah, so the the numbers I use in the sheet actually, Sean, I use the weighted DVOA, which oh, factors okay. in recency a little bit more than total DVOA, and so Baltimore is actually number one in that. Uh, you're right, though; they did drop to two if you look at the overall. I think also just from a macro, like injury, like status of team health, Jags are just more banged up across the board. I mean, with the exception of maybe Kyle Hamilton it seems like everyone else is going to be playing for, for the, uh, the Ravens, uh, Roquan Smith, the back thing. I feel like he's had this on and off for a while. Just uh, takes the shot on game day, gets out there and, and plays a little bit ball. And again, I think if it's going to be a sloppy wet game, sure. You can say, well, yeah, I picture Lamar fumbling. A, it seems like he's doing that in a lot of games and it's not affecting the outcome. And on the other side, I could see the same thing for Trevor. Yeah, I, I I will say like the one area of this game that you didn't touch the pass rush will have some success, I believe. And if that happens, this Ravens defense, again, it, it's not, you said, I test, I agree with you a little bit. And I think some of it is they just don't make any massive plays. They're just solid. They don't, they don't make the splash play. And, and maybe that's why we're, we're not remembering them. But I, I think this I love the 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 one seed stuff I'm sitting on. I love the division stuff I'm sitting on. And I think I think Ravens roll. I'm gonna another, go Jags. Another donkey position for me. I'm gonna go Jags. I think this is a letdown spot for the Ravens. I got a lot of donkey positions this week. Hey a lot of donkey positions. Hey Monday night football. Last one. Do, 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 do. Might dun, be dun, a little dun, wet. Dun, dun. Oh, and by the way, going back to your Buffalo uh, terrorism jokes, Sean. Oh, I'm not uh, making light of it. Real Sean, quick, I'm making light of Sean McDermott. If, if he does not, if he makes it through the next year, the Bills do play the Seahawks, so maybe he and Pete Carroll can have some <laughs> conversations about what what happened uh, on those days. Monday Night Football: The Eagles head to the Pacific Northwest to take on the Seahawks. It's a true battle of the birds. Uh, Eagles do have a big look ahead spot against Tommy Cutlets next week. Uh, also a back-to-back -back road spot for the birds. 80% of the bets coming in on the Eagles looking for that uh, double bounce back spot. Uh, Sean, I know the, the confidence has, uh, has certainly gone down in the recent weeks. Jalen hurts on a two game losing streak. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I I don't know if you saw the the Kyle Shanahan uh, had a scouting report that you could just get uh, if you annoyed DK Metcalf, he would uh, it would get inside his head. So pretty funny that um, DK is uh, dumb enough to be a baby, it, and very ironic that he uses a pacifier as his mouthpiece, considering he is a baby. Sean, I assume you're on the Eagles this week. Um, and you're going to explain to me how Jalen Hurts doesn't lose three games in a row. I Before assume. this loss, Hurts went 32 starts with only three total losses. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, he doesn't lose a lot of games. <laughs> no, and and again, there's a there's a bunch of stuff going on with this team. Uh, didn't play good games back to back. Um, you know, maybe they collapse and maybe they're a completely dog shit team. I think they get up for this spot. I think they match up pretty well against this a team. Now the Eagles defense has really been the unit that's been struggling the most. I think the fact that they got an extra day of rest really does help the Eagles um, because of kind of how this, how rough this schedule has been. Seattle's not an easy place to go in and get a win, but I like our chances against a banged up Geno Smith, a a Geno Smith. That's going to be limited in the pocket. Um, you know, and I, I, I just think we're going to be able to move the ball against the Seattle defense as well. So stay committed to the running ball. Don't give up on running the ball. Um, you know, don't fumble three times in the opponent's territory. Oh, wow. This is stuff that I think they can figure out and not do. So yeah, I'm on the Eagles laying the four. Are are we worried about the 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 talk about Jalen Hurts uh, struggling to read a defense and maybe Pete Carroll, great defensive coordinator, will have a plan. Some are saying, some are asking that. No, I'm not. Okay. I think he can read a defense. I mean, I watched the film, uh, and I think he he was reading the defense. He was pursuing the more aggressive option, and you know, AJ Brown had a drop, a couple key drops. Devonta Smith had some drops. I actually thought, like when you rewatch the game film, Jalen Hurts had a better game than I originally thought. That being said, he needs to play better. Um, you know, he's not playing anywhere near. His MVP season, like last year, or even how he was playing earlier in the year. So I think these past two losses, wake up call for the team, for the organization, and getting the extra day of rest. I expect them to come out and and fuck up the Seattle Seahawks. So let's go. Really torn here because on one hand, um, <clears throat> it I need the Eagles to win this game for for a multitude of reasons. Hmm. One, the Giants have the Seahawks second round pick, so it's been enjoyable to watch that just plummet. Two, I, I don't need the Eagles on a three game losing streak oh. going, going into that game. On, oh. Oh, well, but if also it is on Monday night. if it is a three game losing streak, could they be tight enough to really choke it away? Yeah, I, th- this is a tough road spot though, but matchup wise, I kind of agree with you. I think that the Seattle defense has really gone from like interesting and exciting to very beatable. Is your boy Blankenship going to play? It's a good question. I know it's early in the week for the Monday nighter. That that seems like it's an important piece and <clears throat> but but I I I I'll lean I'll the Eagles have uh been Owen to the last 2 weeks. I've been on them both week both weeks. Nice work. So you're part of the problem. Why I, don't you take the Seahawks, Ryan? I will you sh- Give me the Seahawks. Nice. Thank you. I, I I got nothing to lose in this game, honestly. I get the draft pick gets better. The Eagles are you know dire straits. They're talking about firing the coach maybe next week. Uh, Jalen Hurts maybe we we check in with Mariota. Which who was uh was it David Carr that was saying that yeah. we should be looking at Mariota a little bit? No, he's not he's horrific take. Strong. Right up there with uh, Derek Carr, a top ten quarterback. Uh, that, no no no. He said top five. No top five. All I right. think he actually had him at number top four. ten. Maybe I mean it's still a bad take, but it's not horrific. It's not nine eleven analogy. Uh, Sean well, McDermott. Derek horrific. Carr loses to Tommy Cutlets and he's out of the league. He's <laughs> uh, he's gone fishing. Hey, our lock dogs and teas brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Have you signed up with Hall of Fame Bets? What are you waiting for? Use the promo code SGPN. Go to hofbets.com or download the Hall of Fame Bets app to start betting smarter, not harder. They got that sweet sweet parlay optimizer. Helping you break down each leg of your parlay. Find out the weak links. Get them out of there. Um, see what the what the true price should be and what you're actually getting at the sports book. Compare those odds. Find the best numbers and cash in. Uh, and they also, yeah, follow them on social too. They got a bunch of good uh, content, a bunch of fun picks. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit 
HOFBets.com. Promo code SGPN. 50% off your first month. Let's go, baby. All right. Kramer, time for the lock dog and tease. What do you got? Mm. Uh, Happy birthday. Uh, I do think we're getting an amazing opportunity to fade Justin Fields against a very good defense. I'm, oh. I'm not really too concerned about the general uh, injury vibes on the Browns. Give me this Browns team. I just, at Final. home, chance to fade Justin Fields in a situation where his variance is going to be a problem. You know, I, I, I keep kind of looping back around uh, as to find a reason to not take this Denver Broncos team, but I love this Denver Broncos okay. team in this spot. Plus the four points D- Detroit seems broken. I mean, uh, Sean, you know, you, you, that the property value on Jared Goff sucks. Island looks oh, like, it's a Bi- realtor? looks it's like Bitcoin right now. It's, it's plowing through the roof. Phones ringing off the hook. Um. So yeah, let's let's uh, let's fire on that one, mm, and and I'm sure that will make easy happy as I am a a, a lion's mush dog. <sighs> I I do think there is a uh, real possibility here that uh, maybe maybe we should rethink the situation of uh. All right. So I the I I I think. I I think I have to take the Patriots on the money line. Wow. I It's a big dog. I I have not seen a professional football team react to officiating like I've seen the Chiefs in a very long t- time. It's very baby like. And Kadarius Tony is still on the team. You don't think <laughs> Belichick's going to have a plan? <laughs> I'm taking the Patriots on the money line. Come at me. 37 point Come total. At me, bro. 37 point total in a game with Patrick Mahomes. Come at me. Tease. Great week for teasers. First leg. I uh, you know what? I, I won't th- throw Thursday night in. I want to give people ample time. First leg. Give me the Arizona Cardinals up to 18 and a half. <laughs> give me the give me the Jets up to 14 and a half. <laughs> Thank you. And for the last leg, give me the Seattle Seahawks up to 10. Up to ten. Wow. Okay. All You're right. welcome. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. Um, for my first lock. Hmm. Yeah, this Vikings. Nick Mullins on the road. All right, I'll fade you. Give me the Cincinnati Bengals at home. Like that spot a lot for the Bengals. The more I think about it, too, it's like, yeah, what the fuck are we doing? Uh, my other lock. This is intriguing. Are you gonna say something, right? No, I, I, well, I was gonna start uh, helping you find a lock, but then you you started making noises, so I said, I'll "Do back I go?" Off. Uh, Desmond Ritter on the road is so close to what, a lock. You're not gonna lock that up. What I'm gonna, the? F- I'm gonna go Buffalo Bills. No one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, laying two points at home. Fagu. Uh, for my dog, I do like the Giants. I do like this Broncos team. Uh, Ryan's scared to take the Giants on the money line. Doesn't want to. What do you mean? Well, you picked the New England instead. Oh, because that's a better spot. I'm gonna go with the New York Giants. Saints really suck. Uh, for my tees, got a lot going on here. A lot of good options. I'll start with uh, a lot of key numbers to get through, Sean. Start with the Rams down to minus a half. Then I will go uh, Miami Dolphins down to minus two and a half. And then last but not least, give me. Mm. See the see uh, X Rex Sean likes the uh, Jets money line in the chat. I, I that's intriguing as well. A lot of gross money lines. Give me week. the Steelers up to seven and a half. Oh, Wong. Geez. We love you, Wong. I don't know if Stanford Wong it would Long. be on Trubisky. Cox. He might have a, a true if Trubisky, then I'm out of here rule. So we got uh, for our card. I'm liking our card already. Browns minus three, Bengals minus three, Broncos plus four, Bills minus two. What is our our last play? Is Giants uh, plus six? What? Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, why not? Or Atlanta minus three. Packers minus three and a half. I like that too. 
I mean, if you want to put the Giants on the card, why are you so scared, Ryan? You're dressed not, as Tommy I'm DeVito's not agent. I'm not you should scared. have the confidence. I'm to taking play it one game at a time. He was making some NFL throws out there. <laughs> All right, so you're out on DeVito. You're scared to take him. I'm not uh, scared. Packers or Falcons. Not, so you keep you keep doing this uh, this this tactic, throwing stones in glass house. I I would say that we have to decide between the Packers, the okay. Falcons, and the Giants. All right. Uh, Usually I make the decision, but if you'd like, you know. No, you can make the decision, Ryan. Your call. Uh, well, you think uh, are they going to play Jameis Winston? No. Any chance? I mean, if they didn't play him off of uh, Carr having back-to-back -back concussions, why would they play him now? All right. Everybody eats. Give me the New York Giants plus six. Will Ben DiNucci be in attendance? All the all the, all the all the it's, it's like a homecoming weekend. Will people in the New Orleans stands be doing the Italian hand gesture? <laughs> people down on the uh, they're down on that fight. What's the main street? Bourbon Street. It's Bourbon they're... Street. Instead of throwing beads, they're doing this. <laughs> they do chicken cutlets different down there, Tommy. Be careful. Head on a, a swivel. Creole sauce. Head on. Sometimes it's gator. Head on a swivel. All right. Thank you as always, everyone, for tuning in the podcast. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. We'll be back talking props and college basketball double header uh, tomorrow, and then of course uh, tune into the Veasan Show nine o'clock Pacific midnight East, and uh, sign up for the Patreon pickums Sports Gambling Podcast dot com slash Patreon. Get a sweet uh, prize pack there for you. It of course is the uh, mystery liquor. Enjoy that. I think you will. <laughs> for the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green. He's Ryan. Ciao. Kramer, let it ride.